Hello everyone, and welcome to a belated, uh, well we skipped last week due to GM um, getting sick, GM is fine now, well physically, mentally, who knows. Anyways, uh, we are going to attempt something that I've been wanting to try for a while, but haven't had the courage to do, and this is going to be a crossover episode between the crews of the USS Concordia and the crew of the uh, Deep Space 15. Yes, we're crossing over with ourselves. This is so freaking meta, I'm, I can't wait. Uh, so, uh, without any further ado, uh, Captain Crawford, I believe, has the log. <laughs> that I do. Captain's log, stardate 84924.2. Repairs on the USS Concordia have been nearing completion. Seeing a starship return home with the power of several shuttle warp cores is interesting to see, but repairs should have it good as new. Uh, in diplomatic relations, negotiations with the Remnant Alliance are wrapping up, and Commander Dolrum is returning with the Aryan and the Laden for the foreseeable future. Dolrum's work has been exceptional for the last four months, and I'm proud of how much he's grown. Excitingly, the Federation Membership Committee is finally... Eh, is finalizing negotiations with the Shobad Neh, who may at last be joining the Federation. If we're successful, this will mark the first time a transwarp hub connected civilization will join the Federation. Admiral Zier, you ever hear this? Thank you for trusting me enough to give me my first posting as captain here. End log. Okay. So we open up on the tumultuous interior of the Carceri Nebula, with the angry Nebula a little less angry now that most of the uh, um, reactions have died down. Uh, the USS Arion and the USS Layden are, ho are holding station just outside the uh, station, while the U USS Concordia is taking up some ver very um, valuable real estate inside, uh, getting its engineering hull dissected and properly repaired and a shiny new warp core installed much to uh, Moose's uh, happiness <laughs> so all is going well as we cut to ops there will be a slower panning of set pieces because I have so many for this bloody thing in this bloody game there we uh, so, Captain Crawford and Commander Dolrum are on the station, keeping in engineering. And for the fun of it all, we'll even have Demos up keeping an eye on station security. So, it's been a fairly quiet week. Uh, nothing's been seen from the... The only interesting traffic has been the... Uh, US, or the uh, Ferengi ship, the USS... Or not the USS, the Limitless Latinum. They passed through, or they passed through here approximately about a week ago, heading through the uh, transwarp hub to parts unknown, or as uh, G Damon Gong calls it, this uh, the eternal search for profit continues. Um, <clears throat> the ah, uh, where is Captain Admiral Riker and command and uh. Deanna Troy are busy in their quarters, just relaxing after a fairly busy time with the uh, Remnant Alliance on the other side of the, or one of the other sides of the Transwarp Hub. Uh, so basically, this is free for all RP until I decide to get the plot going forward. Does anybody have anything they wish to do uh, with any of their characters? So okay, Captain, there's, oh, oh sorry. sorry, no, you're fine. <laughs> so did uh Captain Bashir like just come to ops? Sure, <laughs> he's, he's up on yes. ops with a large uh, data pad in his hand. Okay, Captain Bashir, Captain Crawford, have the uh, repairs on the Concordia met your specifications? Absolutely. Thank you for all your help. Uh, it's been a interesting couple of months, I have to admit. 
Yeah. Well, I tell you, um, seeing your ship outside being uh, essentially towed by some shuttles um, was an interesting sight to see. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, agree. Uh, Moose wasn't very happy, but at the same time, having your entire ship frozen from the inside out and a giant sea serpent wrapped around your warp core does uh, seem to mess things up. But I am glad, though, that finally we got the mold smell out of the carpet. <laughs> well, it's good to hear. <sighs> How's things been going around here? Um, they've certainly been, uh, moving along somewhat as normal. Uh, seems things with both the Remnant Alliance and the Shobadna have been going well, so it's good to see that maybe eventually, uh, they'll be joining us in the Federation. Well, at least the Shobadna, the Remnant Alliance might be another thing. Anybody else have anything else? No. Okay. Then we. Um, the heck does a. Oh, sorry. I've just muddled all my tokens up. This is going to be fun. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Lieutenant Derval uh, pop, pipes up. Captains, we are receiving a hail from Gap from a catapult Beta Three. Bias. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Commander Cochrane's reporting that the U that the that ah, Lucius Hawthorne and the delegates are a pro are making their way through the catapult at this moment. Uh, uh, All right, Captain. He goes puzzled. Yes. I've just lost contact with the catapult, attempting to reestablish link. He begins typing f fast and furious on his console. Lieutenant, on screen. Ah, there's no screen on here. Instead, there's the 3D holograph projector that is projecting a screen. Ah, it's projecting the ex exterior sensor net to the that of the station. Uh, with it, all the nearby planets and points of interest are labeled. Mm -hmm. Uh, conspicuously missing is that of Catapult Gamma 3. Or, not Gamma, Beta 3. Uh, sir, the station's gone dead. I've lost contact. Captain, do you want me to Still take you laden? <laughs> Might have to. Lieutenant Darval, is there any... Are you able to tell if there's still any life signs aboard the Catapult? Long-range sensors are too inaccurate to d to discern that, sir. All right. Um, I suggest taking the laden so we have firepower, although it's not as quick as the Arian. You'll have to use yours. I don't I'm know curious. if I, I don't know if mine's up and ready to go yet. I have to get my crew back. So, yeah. um, well, we could always take both. You want the Arian, and I'll take the laden. I'm free. I can go. Thorn just turns to Crawford, Captain. Captain. <laughs> Make it so. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have a guest captain on the laden for the moment. All right. Uh, I should mention, Captain, that on the data pad you had for Moose, uh, roughly another uh, six hours or so until the uh, repairs are fully complete on the uh, USS Concordia. Or, you know, only another two hours if you want to just fix a few things while in transit good to know i appreciate it but yeah i was gonna say i'll let her let her get fixed i assumed it wouldn't be ready yet okay so now comes the fun part of figuring out who's going on what ship uh so oh boy all of the... <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh, so um under the characters 
you'll see the Cerberus characters, <coughs> and under that is the Cerberus support characters. Uh, so let's do with the um, let's do with the Arian yeah. first. So that would be Commander Dalrum's ship. No, the Arian's going for Dalrum's going to take the Laden because it's 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 got he's the blasty. Ah. Yeah, he's, I feel like the blasty commander is better on the blasty ship. Fair enough. Okay, so on a ship on a bridge that looks eerily familiar, there, Captain. Um, who is going to join Captain Bashir on the USS Laden? Let's go ahead and keep this fairly simple, out of character, and I'll take some of my I'll take my crew okay. <laughs> of the Concordia. <laughs> okay, uh, Commander Hadrix will stay behind to oversee the final refit. But, uh, for so we'll have Ferliza for medical. Um, Moose, do you want to come along, or do you want to stay on the Concordia? Moose will stay on the Concordia. Okay. Uh, do you have a character that you wish to bring along? Mm. Tuesday, perhaps? No, I think we need it now. Not really, no. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Um, so we'll have uh, more for science. And Go we'll... ahead and do uh, Zach's for uh, engineering. Oh, okay bring along Zach for engineering. Uh, let's do since we probably need a decent security officer, how about uh, how about Crewman Dura for security? Dura okay. on security? Okay. Do and that. we need a helmsman. Yeah. Do mud. Yeah. Or would I think mud would work better on, well no, that you'll um, have your cat. Mud or primrose, I mean they yeah. both probably take them both. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, Primrose, come on, let's go. On. Okay. <laughs> so we'll do that for Primrose. Okay, let's jump over to the USS Laden. Who? Hello. Okay. <laughs> oh my. Yes. I paid no attention to the crappy Photoshop job of that. Um, so we have Doldrum. Keevan's over overseeing that with Moose. Um, I would like to have uh, Chief Petty Officer Jar and Nia come along as engineering. I'm not surprised on that front. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's that. That's that. Um, do you have a character that you'd like to bring along, Shizno? Uh, isn't Demos there? Yep, he's there. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Because I believe his con score has gotten pretty good, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. All right, cool. He'll pilot. Why not? That'll be fun. Uh, and uh, Sulkin can be there. Dr. Sulkin. He'll be medical officer, as who knows what will happen. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think everyone has a character. Except Hadrix, who just came in. Oh, is that? Oh. Hadrix. Hi, Hadrix. Huh. You're <laughs> just in time for us to completely ignore you, because we weren't complete. You made it sound like you were going to be a little later. Okay. Ah. Oh boy, fun. Okay, so buddy, pick out three characters. <laughs> even on Dolrum's ship, the Blasty ship, and on Arian. Well, okay. Um, the XO will be on the Arian for the moment. As soon as I get all the tokens going. Okay, fantastic. So, all the tokens are in place. The stage is currently set until we do this again once the Concordia goes out, but, you know, one thing at a time. Uh, Cars... No. Oh. With minimal fanfare and excessive amounts of speed and power, uh, the USS Arion and the USS Layden depart the nebula and make I their remember. way immediately to Beta 3, where at... Warp 8 will take approximately three hours to get to. Doesn't Arion have uh, QSD? Does it? I don't think it did. Uh, let's look. I thought the Ar Arion had QSD, but I knew the Laden did not. I thought it was vice versa. I didn't think either of them had a QSD, but what do I know? I'm just the GM. The Apollo had QSD. Oh, yeah, that, was... uh, that could be what I was thinking. Yeah. 
Eh, they both start with A. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I know that nope. the Apollo has QSD, but no, not either of the ships. Are you going to try to uh, see who has the bigger warp drive here? Is that what the... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Can we just do like convoy or something like that? Go into yeah. each other's slipstream? Yeah, well, yeah. You don't cross. Don't, the... don't cross the streams. Uh... Or do cross the streams and see what happens. <laughs> right. And that's how we end the season. <laughs> Congratulations. Mutually assured destruction. Game is over. Thanks all for coming. I'll stop the stream now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you drop out of warp at... You drop out of warp at the long dis at the exterior of the Graviton Catapult Beta 3. Uh, at this point, you do not need sensors to tell you several things. Uh, one, the there are... Uh, currently no life signs on board the station. Uh, two, uh, size, a small chunk of the station's uh, upper upper pylon is destroyed. Hmm. Uh, the power supply, uh, the, the catapult itself has no power. And there is significant amount of debris around where the, uh, where the, ah, defense perimeter of a couple photon torpedo launchers and a couple phaser cannons were. Hmm. What kind of weaponry did this? Well, let's scan it and find out. <laughs> okay. The sciences. Okay, so I think this is going to be a Moore scan. Um, so if uh, Commander Moore and Lieutenant <laughs> Junior Grade Moore. And I get a promotion! Yes. <laughs> Again! I, I don't believe you have the authority to promote him to the rank of commander. <laughs> I'm the GM. I can just... I have a cue flash, a sound effect here that will make you do whatever you want. But... You know what? That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Ensign Moore. Or, okay, now Lieutenant Junior Grade Moore. Uh, Inside Science and can be assisted with the USS Arion's uh, sensors plus science, please. This will be a difficulty one. All right. Um, I'll pick up the Arion. Right. Sensor operations counts as the focus. Perfect. Nothing from the Arion. Well, I also I have technical expertise. <coughs> Ooh. Which I don't know that it has ever come into play. Oh, nice. Well, uh, I, uh, it's come into play maybe once or twice, but okay, if technical expertise is a thing, feel free to re-roll that. I'll re-roll uh, that zero. Okay. So you already have one momentum. Oh, boy. And a Good complication. Job, Fantastic. You know what? That I don't know why I had three momentum already on my token. I'll take that away. Uh, but, you know, time. adds flavor. Yeah. But ironically enough, he forgot to announce how the GM doesn't have any threat. <laughs> no, no, GM, I'll take that for more threat. Cause it the point that, but I re-rolled that 19 and got a 20. Like, apparently, that's going to be how tonight goes. Oh, hey, that makes my life all that all the more interesting. Okay, so, um, what you see more is the debris around the weapons platforms is approximately four times the mass of uh, each individual uh, cannon, uh, so, and the material is consistent with that that, or the metallurgy is consistent with that of Vitars class ships. Um, the uh, the antenna, or you detect residual uh, torpedo fire, which has taken down, or no, sorry, got my notes mixed up. Uh, you detect a similar cloud of Vitars ship debris um, where the top of the uh, sensors or the top of the station was. Uh, you continue to detect no life signs on the station, but you're also not detecting enough organic matter t for there to be, you know, bodies. 
Um, let's see. Yeah. It's probably all I got with the complication. Oh, no, I'm just taking the threat for the complication. So oh, you'll see okay. that later. Okay. Uh, Captain, the signatures that I'm picking up on the sensors are the Tars in nature. Um, there's no life signs on the station, nor does there seem to be enough for any body. So They're eliminating, gone. you know, process of elimination, they were abducted by aliens. But really, if aliens are getting abducted by aliens, what does that sound like? There's going to be a lot of probing going on. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, the Tars. I haven't heard. I, okay. Hmm. Interesting. They had closed their borders, hadn't they? As far as I know, the little civil so war. I can't imagine why they would attack the station. Then take prisoners. You think... And for Lisa, just sort of sitting there thinking for a second. And they'll eventually pipe up. Do you think they might have taken them as... Uh, leverage, as it were, to... Possibly make us help them? I think if they would have just called and asked, it would have been a lot easier. Interesting theory, though, Doctor. Oh, or, at least right. it would have been a little more diplomatic. Right. Oh, Wasn't there another... a ship that was going to come through? There was. Yeah. More will kind of say that out, like, thinking out loud. Uh, should we see if they are still waiting to come through? Can we make contact with them? Um, not without a functioning graviton catapult. Right. Can we get this one functioning in the... That's what I'm thinking. I'm Let's beam tank? down and take a look. Okay. Maybe we can make contact with it. All right. Of course, I'm going to I'm gonna call the uh, Arion and let them know everything that we found out what's going on. And... You... Cap Captain, you're the one on the Arion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a hard enough time as the, not the Concordia. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to be the confusing part that I'm on the wrong ship. <laughs> that, that's totally in character. <laughs> this lumbar support is completely wrong. Right. This, this is supposed to be over here. The temperature's not right in here. Hold on. <laughs> no, though this bridge is eerily familiar, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> Yay, we it's the standardization. Every bridge is the same anymore. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, so who's going to beam onto the station? Uh, more will. Okay. Yeah, I'm going down. More on the captain. Let's get some tokens oh. going here. So we have an engineering person. Uh, I'll, I'll take Nia. Sure. Sorry, I'm just sorting through all my character tokens here, trying to find the right people. Thank you, Spence, for not uh, letting me do Zach's right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You still could. I know. <laughs> no, 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 not going to do that now. Uh, USS Layden, uh, Commander Dalrum, what are you going to be doing at this point in time? Uh, Layden's going to be uh, seeing, getting the news that this was an uh, attack. Layden's going to be running uh, signatures, see if we can get like warp trails, anything, ah. any kind of uh, details about where they went, specific, if we could get specific um, uh like type of ships kind of thing, as well as patrolling the area, make sure that we're not going to have unexpected visitors. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, Commander Keevan is probably the de facto s science officer there at the moment. Um, Keevan or Sulkin, either of them, I suppose, uh, run me a, a sensors plus or control science 
and then the laden can assist with sensors plus science. This is going to be difficulty two. I got Zulkin up. I can definitely run scans. And you said we're doing what with which show? Uh, sensor science from the laden, please. Sensor science from the laden. Nope. Nothing there. Love this. Okay. Cool. Apparently, uh, I sense nothing, Commander. Yeah, you... <laughs> okay, uh, Doctor Sulkin, you don't find anything of much interest out there. The USS Sladen sensors are more geared towards targeting scanners than, you know, general sensors. But, you know, perhaps the team on the uh, station might find something else. Ah. Uh, so, uh, the three of you beam on board the station. And it's pre aside from... Aside from uh, a few, you know, blaring alerts that have gone unacknowledged... Uh, uh, this bridge looks like it was in use, literally. There's ready for use. All the stations are powered. Life support is running as normal. The only thing that seems to be a problem is that the shield generators appear to be gone. Hmm. As in, like, they were taken? Or they're destroyed. out of power? Just out oh, of power. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, destroyed. Fun. Yeah, that, that would be the, uh, that would be the uh, oh. reason that the uh, upper pylons are gone. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you two establish connection to the uh, other side? Um, I can certainly see what I can do. I can assist in any way that you need, Engineer. Excellent. Okay. Um, and Nia you... will just crack his knuckles. <laughs> Control engineering. And Moore can assist with either control engineering or control science. Um, computers or communications would be a good Hell system yeah. to have here. I do have a computer's focus. That'll do. Uh, this will be I also have a computer's focus. Huzzah. Difficulty of two. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Yeah, I'm shooting for a 16 with control engineering. So uh, My control science is a 14, so... There you go. I'm hoping you guys get a lot of ones. Oh! <laughs> Oh Jesus! Let's see. Uh, uh, what hold the on. hell? Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! <laughs> hold on! Um, I can burn my determinant. No, I can't because I'm. A I can't. You can't, but I can. <laughs> Do I want to burn it this early? Yeah, sure. This is a, this, this is a, early. This is this is sort of important. Um. Any machine is my plaything to yeah. re-roll that complication. Yeah, if you wish. Well, you'll still have one. Yeah, so I'll just do... Okay, well, so not... it's, a, it's, it's a failure, but it's at least not a complication. You manage to have the speaker systems of the station play break on through to the other side by the doors. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh... Uh, so, alas, the uh, communications array does not seem to be functioning well. Uh, possibly due to the fact that there is a small chunk of it that's been taken out by, you know, debris or detritus from the uh, impact. Um, however, um, as you begin to interface with the system's computers, uh, anyone on this on the bridge, i.e. U3, uh, something begins to automatically play over the speak over the speaker system. And as soon as I pull up what that is, <clears throat> this is a message for the Vatars Imperium, the Vatars Free State, and the United Federation of Planets. For the last year, our two factions have been throwing <laughs> our citizens at each other, heedless of their lives, because it matters not, since we are effectively immortal, thanks to the hideous machinations of our eternity research group. No more. By the time this message is heard, both sides will no longer be able to recreate those who they choose to throw away. 
the so-called United Federation of Planets, who watch our mutual slaughter from the sidelines, content with their moral superiority, this message is for you. Now you have no choice but to get involved. Surely you have a favorite side, so support them. We care not which side it is. Only at the end of it, the Vitar society will no longer be divided. I guarantee that the lives of your soldiers will be less and less certain the longer you remain neutral. I am Cager of the Ova. We are the one-lifers, and we choose to sacrifice our one life to save the lives of all Vitars, however we must. And that, begin that goes on repeat. So character, a I'm going to, I, as in character, I'm going to sit down in the command chair, look down, and just go, fuck. <laughs> Captain, should we so there's a message to the laden? So there's yeah, a Patches... terrorist group. Fun. Love this. But... It's the Civil War, and they're forcing us to get involved. All right, be back. We need to get, uh, contact the laden, uh, play this to commander. And we need to head back to the station. Lieutenant? I think you meant play it to Commander Dolrum. Dolrum, okay. yeah. That's, yeah. Which is still you in your defense. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> True! But you said play it, Commander. I'll, I'm like, wait, what? I'll, <laughs> play I'll, it I'll for relay the Commander. That. Yes. I shall relay that message to the Laden. Mm -hmm. USS Dolrum, you will receive the data packet. And players who want to reread this message in their spare time or for whatever forensics they want to do, uh, you now have that in a handout, including a lovely picture of this cager. Ooh, I like it. Hooray, <sighs> GM prepared handouts. Ooh. Yay. Ooh. Dorum, like, sighs and sits down in his own command chair, like, head, <laughs> hand to forehead. Laden to Cerberus. Captain, do you read? I'm reading. What's happening? Not good. The catapult currently is offline. Um, it was attacked by the Vitars. Judging by the message that we received here, it's from one of the fa one of the sides of the Civil War, the Vitars Free State. I'm transmitting the message to you now. And I transmit that to him. All right. Yeah. We're trying to be pulled into a situation. Captain, we're on our way back. We'll have a little sit down as soon as we get back to the station. Of course. Stay safe out there. Who knows if they're still lying or eh, still laying in wait. Oh, nothing's going to happen to us if I have anything to say about it. And with, you know, one short, one, uh, uh, short theme song later. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the opening, and now we got to go back and, like, oh, God, the episode's starting. Yeah, that was the opening. Uh, <laughs> wow. Now oh. you know why I wanted to start this an hour early, so I could get the introduction out of the way, so we can get to proper plot. <laughs> oh, dude. <sighs> oh, I'm a horrible... I'm either a great GM, a horrible person, or possibly both. Um, no, that's, that's yes. going to be a solid yes from me, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. I this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then when watching, there'll be angry emails. Oh. <sighs> you know what? I'd love to get emails from people that listen. It's not that I publicly you know, broadcast my message, my email address. So, you know. Um, so, due to the amount of things I have... Created. I don't have individual set pieces for the station, so let's just pretend that we're all on back on board op or back on board and huddled around a conference table. So, um, on one side we have. Uh, so, as timing B, uh, just as you guys return back, uh, Captain you or Captain Bashir, because I have to be specific. <laughs> uh, you are greeted by the lovely sight of the USS Concordia, uh, as it has as it is currently leaving dry dock, and testing the void of space for the first time since its week-long uh, refit. 
can I long as we were pulling in, can I longly stare at it like Kirk in the motion picture and <laughs> <laughs> with the beautiful music in the background? If you wish. Um, if, okay, if, thanks. If uh, you point the sensors just right, you can see Moose sitting in your captain's chair, just sort of waving at you as you uh, come, as you come on by. He seems comfortable. <laughs> he seems comfortable I'm and he's yelling at somebody. Himself. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, not, he's not a yeller you know disappointed dad every now and then but I, he doesn't strike me as the yeller uh, <sighs> Hadrix is missing over here and Mr. Moore no, pay no attention to me I'm j let's you know so here's everyone more or less present um, there there, that, and that, and more there. Demos and Sulkin was not here. Now he is. Well, technically, he's got a lot of uh, experience with the uh, Emperor. So, he yeah. I... He does indeed. Okay. And, of course, hearing this, um, Admiral Riker is fuming. All right. Captains, report. I'll go over the message with them of what happened and give him the laydowns of what we know. I don't think I need to read through that message again to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, you probably don't. For, for time sense. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh... Sum it up like this. Ducka, 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 ducka. Hey, Macarena. Uh, there goes my lovely, well-written dialogue. <laughs> and... <clears throat> Is there a pizza at this minute? I mean... Yeah, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you had to bring up the pizza. Our, our budget went to special effects. It's mm -hmm. not, not, not as much like the writing. The lens flares. <laughs> Yes. No, that's the Concordia refit is lens flares. <laughs> Captains, you're not giving me a hell of a lot of information here. We don't have a hell of a lot of information, with all due respect, Admiral. Mm. Rami. I'm old. Oh, sorry. Uh, he oh, what the Admiral speak? Basically <laughs> shouts. And, oh, this was like, remember how my token magic thing works? It's not that. That's not how that works. This is how this works. Rami materializes in the center. Commander. Captains. Admiral. Analysis of the... Hmm. We, I was able to... Uh, per, ah, following a sensor... Ah, let me start again. I was able to hack into the computer systems of the Gamma 3 catapult and have pulled sensor logs it shows Vitar ships it shows five Vitar ships decloaking three performing suicide kamikaze runs on the defense turrets one suiciding the tip of the station in such a way that it caused minimal damage and then one performed a wide beam transport two technologies that I w that the Federation is unaware that the Vitars possess It's not actual cloaking. It's their their version of that like field, right? The shrouding. Mm, no, sir. No, Captain. I this is in line with Romulan cloaking technology, r circa twenty three fifty. Oh, so no. where? So and where are the guitars <laughs> picking up fifty year old cloaking technology? Or have they just? been advancing that quickly and because they've been in civil war and we've been off hands we haven't seen it but it hasn't been that long <sighs> what do we know of the splinter group what do we know about the ova if anything yeah Riker pipes up nothing this was a completely new group to us the few times Troy's reached out to either side in an attempt to gain any influence or po or hosting of 
peace talks that don't involve us selling weapons to one side or another. The, this OVA mention has never popped up. They're new. Or well hidden. He shrugs. Either way. Hmm. So we have... All right, let's see who we're dealing with. We're dealing with the Emperor and the Cloners. We're dealing with the Splinter Group terrorists. And on top of that, we're dealing with the ones that want the Emperor deposed. Am I correct? He's sort of... He theatrically leans back in his chair, smirks, and says... See, this is why I like being an admiral. I can tell you guys. I get to tell you guys to go out and figure out what's going on and find them. True. Although, we're only three ships. And yes. if we try to rescue our men, that might involve taking a side that we don't want to. For the if time... We take... Go ahead. Sorry. No, if we ahead. take two ships and each go to a side and try to investigate, it is completely possible that the Splinter Group is considered a terrorist from both sides. If, if their message um, is accurate about them taking down both sides' uh, cloning facilities, then the, probably the Vitar sides hate them as much as we do. Hopefully. So, going... In that, and I look down to, um, or I, you know, kind of motion in general. If we take that into account, this actually could be a potential way to start dialogue between the two sides. Yes, they have opposing opinions of each other, but if they have a common enemy, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. True. But not necessarily. No, not necessarily, but one joint operation to take care of a terrorist group can lead to a very long line of um, peace. I mean, some of the Federation's greatest peace deals came out of uh, joining forces at a, for a single event. Or even in a case like this, could this could very much seem like how the Cardassians and the Federation kind of jointly helped during the issues with the Maquis in the very initial stages or how the Cardassians joined us at the battle for Cardassia in the Dominion War. I think we might have to try to see if we can get some kind of dialogue started up with... Somehow we have to find this OVA and figure out what's going on with that. Yes. Captains, the, this is your... The, the safe return of Starfleet personnel is your primary objective. Do as little as you can to interfere with the politics or show favoritism to either side. However, if you can get both sides to at least start talking to each other, that's a good start. And try your best to remain as inconspicuous as possible. Therefore, only one ship per destination the larger you're this way, at least we can try and maintain a low profile. Captains, don't let them find you. Don't let them, f or try your best not to let them know that we're onto them. We don't know this group. We don't know how deep their ties run on either side. All we know is that they don't like us right now, and they're in a position of damn well showing it. Very true. Yes, Admiral. So who wants to go where? I suggest well, keeping um, now, one uh, ship kind of in reserve. So I'm going to quickly cut in here with a bit of meta. So you have a handout called Vitar Space. Oh. Which Neat. I will show to players. Oh. Which has all the Vitar systems as well as who, who are on what side as well as several numbers. So the first number is how difficult tasks are going to be to find information. Basically how how readily available the information you might seek is. The other number is 
uh, how likely the possibility is that your presence will make its way back to the group known as the OVA. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see that it might be easier to find information on them in the free Vitars state. However, uh, it's much like it's much likelier that they will know that you're poking around. Mm -hmm. Similarly, it'll be a little harder to find information in the Imperium half, but you know, they don't seem to be as uh, friendly towards them. So make your decisions as you desire. I mean, looking off of it, I would go to the place where the attorney research groups are, because if there was an attack, most likely it's going to be on that place, too. Um, yeah. yes, it, yes, it's more difficult, but it's also less likely to get back to people. So we're able to stay under the radar a little bit longer. Um, and I would say send the Aryan and send the Concordia to keep the Laden kind of in the back. Cl close by, but not close enough to uh, cause concern. I personally... Sorry, I just wanted to ask a quick clarification thing. Mm -hmm. So on these, is it the higher the number, the more likely we're able to be found, or is it the higher the number, the less likely? Uh, the higher the number, the more likely. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I personally want to take the Concordia and go straight to Vax. We have history with the Emperor. I'd like to make contact with the Emperor himself and see what's going on on that end. But then, if we do that, we're essentially opening the door. telling the Ova right away. Well, I mean, the Ova don't care if we take a side. But... They want us to take a side. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. So well, if we're going straight to, you know, if the capital of the then I would say we also go straight to Bellaret, uh, Be Bexalaria. Bexalaria. Bexalara. If we're going to go to the ca the seat of the uh, government, we should go to the seat of the government of both of them at the same time. That's exactly what I'm saying. I want to take the Concordia and go to the Imperial Vax. I think we should take the other sh ship and go to the other capital and make contact with them. So even if they do know that we're talking to them, we're talking to both sides. So whatever does get back to them, they'll think we're, or whatever. But I'd like to get, no, I, I'd like to talk to the emperor himself and find out what's going on. Because not only do we not have any information of what's going on in the Civil War itself and what's that, but with Bax, we have the main, uh, main eternity research group which I've met and toured the facility already and know the head cloner. Um, so I, I just to say, that's where I'm going to take the Concordia, if agreed. Hmm. Okay. I mean, we have two options. We either take the hidden approach and go after the research groups or take the blunt approach and go to the seeds of power. Either way, they have pros and cons. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think the Aryan should go to the free state only because it's a little bit easier. Like difficulty wise. Right. Captain, your opinion? I'm not sure if necessarily going to the capital of both right away is a sm not necessarily a bad move, but it's a risk versus reward. I mean, I've been thinking just straight down the middle, go to the resource planet to uh, Signatu. No. Industrial hub, people are going to talk for the right price and resource rich. So, you know, a lot of people are probably going in and out. So, it's almost like a could be possibly like a trade center kind of thing. 
Yeah. What do we think about Krillia? Well, we all seem to like them. Oh, I mean, Kr oh, Krillia. Sorry. <laughs> not not Krill. Damn. Um, infrastructure. I mean, it could have the same risk, you know, similar risk reward to Segnatu. Now, you also have contacts on Krillia. Uh, Krillia was the planet that back in Cerberus days was sending their recruits to the Draven for... Oh, that's right. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my guys. God. That's yeah. a throwback. Yeah, that's also why it's so easy to find information there. Ah. Because we, we have a rapport with them. Ooh, I kind of like the idea of going back to Krillia, actually. Because maybe, you know, some of the people that were handing off the Tars uh, to the Draven, maybe they had some connections with the Ova, maybe. Speaking of the Draven, should we see if we can get any information out of them or others that we have contacts in the area and see if they've been able to get any information from anybody? I put my head in my hand and I was like... We do have a Draven connection that knows quite a bit on what's going on in the sector. I mean, in the, at this point, get... we're in an information game. Cap Captain, you get a pip on your communicator? Heard my ears tingling. Are we talking about my cousin? <laughs> I wasn't aware that you were psychic, too. I, yeah, I was gonna I say, know. um, we're, we're in a little conference meeting right now. I'll talk to you later. No, uh, yes, I was thinking about calling your the cousin. You just hear a... Actually, <sighs> wait a second. Isn't he on the station? No. I don't think he is, no. No, what happened was... You got, uh... The, um... Uh, Belthier Void Runner uh, pulled the USS Concordia about halfway back to the station. Okay. Then long range long range sensors picked up several. Hmm, ah, sorry, uh, several Lashunt vessels closing at a higher speed than he could maintain. Uh, he said that sorry, uh, prior business and we have to go. Disengaged the tractor beam and left you drifting while he outran his pursuers. Then it was, I'm gonna skip that. I, I wanted to skip that option anyway, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, why don't? Because we're saying we're taking the Concordia to the Vitars Imperium. Is that right? That's my that's my personal like. Okay, I I, I want to take the Concordia to Vax, and then if we take the. Arian to the Free Vitar State. Um, I like the idea of us... I'd say we start at the resource-rich planets, but it's also like... Uh, we're also more likely to be found. Um, why don't we... Even though it's more difficult if we're going to the Free Vitar State, why don't we start at Dolev? I know it's a secondary location, but... Uh, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that will show our hand off only a little, and then we could still hit the Imperium and try to go to a more medium-neutral site and try to go there. Yeah. And if we start at Dolev in... Uh, by it, by it, Luatov, probably pronounce that... We can warn them that, hey, we were just attacked. This is the message. You could be under fire. Earn some brownie points. Yeah. And both of them are on the way to the capital, so... Yeah. I Let's like do that. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so it sounds... So if I heard correctly, the Arion is going to Dolov, then Bexalara? Or Bex Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the Concordia is going straight to Vax? Correct. Okay. Oh, don't. I thought we were going to take the uh, Concordia oh. to uh, Vuatov first, and oh, then okay. Vax. I want to go straight to Vax. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would I, have... I mean, yeah, Crawford's but, going to heavily advise against that. But to be also fair, Vax is a much further distance. So the Arian's going to have time to do both stops where the Concordia has a much further distance to go. Yeah. We're, we're looking so at you can hit like you, you, can, you can hit both of those while I'm going to Vax. Uh, like I said, that's where I have connections. I mean, and, they look like they're about, I'm just saying, like, they're relatively the same distance in terms of Dolith to Vexilara and Watov to Vax. Yes, but from where they are, from where we are. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be at least an extra day at max warp to get to Vax. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, each... each... Yeah, I didn't bother coming up with travel times from the station because, you know, I like my sanity. Okay. Sounds like because looking at it, yeah, we're looking two sectors to get to the Free Vitar State, in at least three sectors to get to Vax. Yeah. All right. And what is the Laden doing? Uh, why don't we have? Remind me the. What what are the Zell? My memory is yep. blanking on them if we've uh, even met them. The Zell were former Borg. Uh unassimilated. Okay. And yeah. Oh wait, they, were these the uh were these the same Borg that were living in the Transwarp part for a while? Uh no. This is a Nighthawk. Th this species was exploring oh, the Nighthawk. Okay. Uh they are We kinda made them. Yeah, sort of <laughs> kind of ish. Um think of uh, just imagine a whole species that were unassimilated, similar to that of Seven of Nine. Okay. And that's basically what they are. Uh, they've become a little more isolationist, given their close proximity to the militaristic Vitars, but they do have fond memories of the Federation. Oh, fond so memories. why don't why don't we have why don't we have the Laden sort of just chill in Zell domain space so if we need it it can just you know go cool yeah that's kind yeah. of what I was okay you can name drop they they know me <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of birthed them <laughs> accidentally uh, on purpose well captain yeah. this is new information I did not know you could birth somebody <laughs> it was he a little cannot. science <laughs> Oh, there was a... Let me tell you about the time of our, I was on nope, Orion. Nope, nope, we're leaving. <laughs> okay. Right. So, the meeting... Uh, just before uh, Captain Bashir goes into the, uh, you know, what his time on Orion was all about, William Riker stand, stands up, indicates the meeting is over, orders captains and command staff to their ship, and uh, he'll look to... Well, he'll say, get going. And be none too happy oh. about it. As he does so, he looks at Rami. Rami, smooth jazz. 20th century. Five, era. six, seven, eight. <laughs> six, seven. <sighs> and as you all make your way to the various turbo lifts, to the transporter rooms, uh, the Satchmo plays in the background. Mm. Nice. Yes. Okay, so now we did a token mix mix and match before. Now I do on. like the fact, by the way, that you did do like the polar opposites on all the ones down the line. <laughs> it took me a second to get that, yeah. but yeah, that was really good. <laughs> okay. Okay, so back to Arion, who will have... Uh, who's taking command of the Arion? Um... Uh, that will be... The Aryan will go to Dolrum. 
Okay. Doldrum on Arian. Uh, what about the Laden? Is that going to be... Um, is uh, Hadrix going to stay on the Arian? Or the Laden? Or not no. Hadrix, Keevan. <laughs> is Keevan going to stay on there? No, Keevan can go on the Laden. Okay, Keevan on Laden. Uh, let's see, Primrose will go back there. So I'm going to suspect... Uh, let's see, also for Lisa. Uh, let's just go down the line. Um... Uh, ah, sorry, uh, Captain Bashir, who do you want to have on the laden? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll have Sulkin for me. Sulkin on the laden? Okay. Yep. Keep a doctor uh, in reserve. Yep. Yep. Uh, Do Dolrum has Dolrum. Uh, Shizno, who do you want to have on the USS laden? Demos. Demos on laden? Or, got yeah. <clears throat> I will find Demos there. Demos the Slayer. Acting second officer. Why not? Um, shall I leave Dura in the tactical spot there, Spencer? Yeah, Dura's fine there. Okay. Uh, Helm officer, I'm assuming, going to be Mud? We can steal Mud from uh, yeah. the uh, Concordia. Sure. Uh... I don't see mud in my support characters. Where the heck did he go? He's in the support characters for uh, Concordia. Of course he is. Well, let's fix that. There we go. Well, I mean, he was on the Concordia as yeah, well. He was. But just, you know, as a slightly unwilling, sedated person, but... <laughs> uh, somehow I found the button to expand all my menus. That's a new... <laughs> uh, Roll 20, why? Um, for science, uh, Lakila will go with us to on the Arian as well. Okay. David Mudd and Lakila. Fantastic. Now we'll move over to the Laden, who will get... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot to ask. Uh, Given. Uh, yes? Who do you want on the... Uh, Arian. Oh, um, no, 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 no. Mm. Do we really? Do do we have medical already thrown on there? I have Doctor Salkin. Yes. Um. Oh yeah. Mm. Throw Dresden over there. Dresden. Uh, Dresden from the ah Concordia Dresden. Science. Concordia Science is getting shunted. For the moment. Okay. Ensign Dresden, Ensign Lakila operating as science people. Neat. Okay. Onward to the Laden. We just did the Laden. Okay. No, we we're just nope, doing the Aryan. the Aryan. Now we're on the Laden. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. I know, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Nia, uh, he can be on here. Running engineering. Demos and... Demos is in two places. Yeah. Demos and Midas. I mean, Demos is a powerful character. It would not surprise me that he's tried that, but that's not how it has how his brain works. Midas will just be in one spot control. <laughs> uh, we'll just put Midas back with Demos. There we go. And then, okay, we will have Commander Keevan there. You're all. Jernia. Uh, Jer I have TM here for some reason. He must be a leftover. Unless someone wants to take him, we can... I'll take TM. That's fine. Okay. Uh, um, but he cannot fly the ship. We need no. a flyer. We need a flyer. Oh, I know who can be a flyer. Since we're shoving people around, let's bring over Kathos. Uh, engineering, we have Nia here. Um... Spencer. Oh, sorry. Spencer has Nia. Yeah. Um, Scotty has... TM. Who, Scotty has TM. Uh, Shizno, who do you want to bring on the Laden if you want? Uh, if it's just for the Laden, uh, no one else's Demos is fine. Okay, just Demos on there. Cool. Um, 
Blarg. Uh, gate jumper. Yo. Uh, do you want anyone in particular on the laden? I don't hardly remember those characters, but I got three going on. So uh, I'm. <laughs> Throw somebody on there. What do we need? Okay. Um, all right. I believe with the laden, we need a medical person. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh. <laughs> no, who was medical? Where was she? where was she? Um, it's M Mira. Mira, is that who you're thinking? Krim. Yeah. Or we could do. Um, isn't Declorza? Yeah, Declorza. Where there we are, Mellor Declorza. There we go. Declorza is a counselor, though. Like, that's yeah. just that's a foreign medical. Yeah. True. Can I be a Southern Bale sire, doctor? Why not? She, I don't. She, she hasn't seen much in the way of actual action, so you can play her however you wish if the need arises. Uh -oh. I believe everyone has a character all over the bloody place. So, we uh, first on the docket will be the individuals. I believe it was heading to Buatov. Or no, Dolov. So, uh -huh. do, do, do. does anybody have any scenes they want to do while in warp transit? I do have something I'd ah. like to do on our way. Sure. And which set piece? And who do you want? Oh, it's no. You don't have to do a set piece. It's okay. just a stupid little thing I want to do. As I've been dying to do this for weeks. Okay. Um, as we're about to take off with the beautiful, new sparkling Concordia, I want to stand up on the bridge, and like, put my hands on my hips, take my index finger, and go, execute. And I look over to Hedrix. What do you think? <laughs> Let's try something else. Okay, fair enough. I wanted to do a thing. End scene. <laughs> Fun. Okay. So, and you guys are heading to Buat or Doliv, if I recall, or the late the place. or Arian. No, the the yeah, Arian's going to Doliv, yeah. and the Concordia is going to Vax. Fantastic. So. We are going to go to Dolive. Now, Dolive is, uh, according to Astrometrics and Starfleet Intelligence, Starfleet, Starfleet Information and Astrometrics, Dolive is actually a Class L moon surround in orbit around a Class J supergiant. Oh. It is. It was originally the backup site for the Eternity Research Group's cloning lab that apparently has been on the wrong side of this particular civil war and has been repurposed. Uh, the USS, after a day or so at warp, or about two or two and a half days or so at high warp, uh, the USS Arion drops out of warp at the system's exterior. What they find is around the orbit of the moon are three Brahave class destroyers, um, which are, I believe, class four sized cruiser cruisers. Nope, sorry, scale three. So they're roughly the size of the USS Defiant or the USS uh, Laden. Uh, they are holding station keeping in orbit around the planet, or the moon, and in orbiting around the giant planet itself is a much larger uh, Haruks class carrier. Obviously your sensors are far better than those of the uh, Vitars, so you see them before they see you. Dolorm will just stand up and look at the uh, sc the layout on the screen. Well, let's see what we can do. Home, lay in a course, and communications, open a channel. Okay. 
Now, who are you directing your message to? Just kind of an open communication. Okay. Uh, see who comes up. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Since this is a scene change, uh, you lose that one momentum. But I will be a kind GM and allow this to be a difficulty zero task to gain some. Um, so right. whoever wants to run communications, so that is probably going to either be uh, Demos or uh, oh Dura or Demos. Uh, can you please roll me a control plus engineering? And the Arion will assist with com communications plus engineering. I have the Arian's ship up. Or the sheep, whatever it is. And it was. Oh, okay. oh, it would help if I got the roll back there. Okay, mm -hmm. Arion got a success. Dura or Demos? I think Dura's doing it. Okay. Um, uh, since. Will this count as an activation for her? Yes, it will. Okay, um, what, I'm going to be meta here. What's a, what's a focus I can give her that would help me here? <laughs> communications. Yeah, let's just give her communications. <laughs> you got to speak to them before you shoot them, right? That's yeah, exactly. Awesome. But when, when we need to shoot them, I have good shooty shooty, so it's fine. True. I was going to say we could flavor it instead of communication, something like, um, I don't want to say diffuse the tension because that's a talent, but something like that. <laughs> the focus will matter because her, her engineering's a one. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we got two, we got two momentum out of it. Yeah, we did. We that's did two momentum. All right. So, as the comms open, Dolorum will just stand. This is Commander Dolorum of the USS Arian, representing the United Federations of Planets. Uh, we have come to request information. We had some of our people uh, kidnapped from a research base and are wanting to figure out who where they've gone. Okay. Uh, both Mud and Dura, uh, your sensors light up as the two, or as two of the Brahave destroyers break orbit and head out to your location. Uh, the Haruk's carrier uh, leaves polar orbit and be and sets a course towards the moon. They are hailing. Open the channel. Mm -hmm. I am Drimlack. Representing the, uh, and I speak for the defense fleet on this state on this system. You are not here to assist us in rebuilding what the Ova have destroyed. No, but the Ova are who we are looking for. They attacked our um, our catapult base um, and kidnapped the officers that were serving there. He snorts. Such cowardly tactics. They did some. I do not disagree. They performed a similar maneuver here. Two of their ships came out of nowhere, literally, launched a series of torpedoes to the planet's surface before our interdiction fleet could intercept. They were destroyed without, per, without putting up any further fight. Yeah, we, the OVA, from what our records are showing from what we could pull from the station, uh, uncloaked is what we, the term we use, but uncloaked and several kamikaze or um, sacrificed themselves into the station to uh, knock out weapons and shielding before mass transporting everyone out. Mm. We were... Hoping to see if we can find, uh, get information on their whereabouts. We are looking to get our men back. Mm. Uh, 
you are welcome to review what information we have, Captain. I, we did not have much. This particular, this station has survived, or survived for a long time by being under everyone's radar, and so does not boast a large or intricate defense network. That would make sense, tactically. If people don't know it's there, then why defend it? Kind of puts a bead on it when it doesn't need to be. He nods. Any help you would be willing to uh, give us would be much appreciated. I shall liaise with our local ADRAC to grant you permission to shuttle your way, to uh, make your way to the surface. Perhaps your vaunted Starfleet technology will ha have s find information that our, sh our scanners did not. A second set of eyes to look over anything I don't see as any as being bad in any situation. Uh, he pauses for a second, looks down at his console. His eye, um, his eyes. He doesn't have any eye. He doesn't have any proper eyebrows. They're actual bone growths in the shape of eyebrows, because that seems metal as hell. Um, they uh. <laughs> They rise up a bit in surprise, and he sort of snorts. Apparently, the Adrak is way ahead of me. You have been granted permission to land on the surface. Your ship will, of course, be under our protection. Your ship will also be under our watch. Do not try anything. And with that, he cuts the car. He cuts communication, and both ships sort of fall in beside, uh, taking up an escort formation. Oh, wonderful. Mud, take us in and put us in orbit. And then we'll prepare a shuttle. Okay. Ooh, shuttling, not, not transporter. Cool. Well, they said landing location, and I figure I might as well play into their cards as much as I can and oh. not overstep my bounds that's fair and so i can get some tokens going who's going on the shuttle well thorum will <laughs> okay. uh, i think i think dura will go as security detail and as to uh not have a show of force because it's probably not smart it's just going to have a uh type two on her okay that's standard. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Demos, Sulkin, Dresden, Lakila. Anyone else coming down? Yeah, I'll, Dresden will go down. I'll take Sulkin. All right. Shizno? I. Are we worried about having too big of a force down there? Because it's kind of a sensitive thing, and Demos isn't that subtle. subtle. <laughs> <laughs> so Demos will stay aboard of the ship just in case anything happens. Okay. Yeah, the the giant robot man might not be the smartest idea to bring down. Well, and before Dolrum leaves, he'll look at Ela. Uh, like Ela, be prepared to run sensor scans. I'm going to see if we can get permission to scan and see if we can pick up anything in the area. You know, shot in the dark, but you never know what we can find on a sensor scan. Okay. I don't One remember who did shuttle montage later. I see that Roll20 still hasn't fixed their background cropping issue. Um, a series. A small shuttlecraft departs the laden and makes its way down to the surface. A series uh, class L, which is most, which is barely habitable by most um, humanoid standards, but the Vitaris are actually quite adept at living at it. However, the only thing on the surface is a it was once a series of domed structures that roughly would contain approximately 100 people at max. Uh, however, much of it, at least half of it, is obscured under a, a crater, a series of small craters, I should say, as a series of uh, things that anyone with a tactical background would, rep would recognize as a targeted orbital bombardment. Oh, 
Uh, as the shuttle beams down, you are met by this individual. Uh, Vitaris female, uh, slender of build, but not, she's not the type that is, you know, slender, but, you know, a good cardio. No, she's just slender because she doesn't really eat much and is probably not healthy. Uh, her <laughs> skin tone is slightly paler than most Vitaris you've seen, and her eyes have a bit of a manic look to it. Uh, Dr. Sulkin, this is pretty much uh, sleep deprivation or possibly PTSD. Not 100% certain, but uh, she rushes out and says, Oh, you're, you're, you're the Starfleet people. Yes, hi, um, I'm Cambrus, the, well, the person left in charge here after, well, and she points over her shoulder. That, um, right, well, um, Sorry, I'm not used to getting visitors or bombed. She breathes. Look, uh, you guys probably know what you're looking for better than me. Uh, just do your best. Don't fall in. She points to the crater. Take a, oh, take a breath. Thank you. What can you tell us of everything that's happened here? It was approximately two lunar cycles ago uh, we were just having a late dinner uh, we had just f finished the uh, batch of resurrections for the day and they were being shipped off to their new assign to their uh, recent assignments director chark ah, director chark had said he was just going to be a bit and went back down into the vats for some uh, final uh, close up for the night yes um, after that he well there, there was a screaming sound. Um, everything lit up at once. Then there was noise. Then there was, then I, then there was nothing for a while. And then I woke up and the place was on fire. And then, well, and she looks. Then that happened. Then there was this voice broadcast over everything, saying how it, this was. They were taking it away from us. I, I, I don't know this. She, this is, is something. This is a similar story to what we uncovered on the station of ours that was attacked. Mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, Dora is going to unclip like a, whatever like the Federation, uh, standard like canteen would be. Mm -hmm. It sort of just slowly hands it out to uh. Canvas? Is that how it's said? Canvas, yes. Okay. And just slowly hands out the canvas to see if she'll take it. Oh, she does, and she drinks from it. She only takes a couple swigs. But... If you if you need to drink the entire thing, you can. No, 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 this is fine. Um, she passed it back. Um, anyone who remembers uh, Bile... Dr. Sulkin, you know this offhand, that the by uh, develop uh, by growing up in a class L environment, uh, they require far less hydration than many other humanoids. May I supply you with a supplement or anything else? Do you have anyone that requires medical attention? Uh, the medics took everyone and are working on them now. They have to be careful, you see. We don't have the ability to recreate them oh god Every... by, by the emperor no by dolorum will just like go over to campus and she just breathe <laughs> she just okay. sits down how are you guys doing on supplies we can't we're not allowed to supply weapons but we can supply with any kind of uh aid other than that food would be nice we haven't had a lot in the last couple months rations you see I will uh, stand up and hit my communicator. Uh, Dolrum to the Aryan. Demos, your combat beeps. Aryan here. Can we round up some uh, rations to get down here? Some uh, 
food and uh, medical aid to, for the people here. Uh, they've been hit pretty hard and, and would appreciate any assistance. Understood. We'll get working on it. Thank you, Commander. Carry him out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And she hugs you. <laughs> Dilworm's like, shocked, wasn't expecting that. Uh, returns the <laughs> hug, but it's kind of one of those like, uh, what do I do? I, I, I'm looking at you, eyebrow raised. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she... Don't do that too. Uh, uh, she lets go and wanders back in. Come on, you probably want to actually, you know, do something. And I don't know, do whatever it is you Starfleet people do. She leads you in. Uh, what of the half of the facility that's left is still in decent condition. Uh, you can tell that shockwaves have let a series of spider cracks through a lot of the superstructure and some of it's been propped up with emergency bulkheads um, and the like a couple force fields here and there to shore up very damaged stuff technicians are still working on computer systems but at the same time looking up every now and then just to make sure that the roof is still not getting closer we're, we're a small facility we kind of have to be just well we had to be just well the facility was small back in its heyday. Now it's the Free State's version of the regener the resurrection vaults. She points to the crater. If you really want a bird's eye view, you can jump back there. I'm sure some of the vats are still intact. But the if you need computer access, you can just... And she puts a shaky hand over to a bank of computers that are currently vacant. Hmm. See what kind of information that your sensors were able to get. And we'll see what we can uh, decipher from it. I was also going to see if we could request permission to use the Arian in orbit and do a sensor scan of the system. Uh, there might be some residual uh, residue or uh, signs of the OVA and see what we can deduce from that. She... Her eyes just say that... what Her eyes tell you that she wasn't really listening to a single thing you said. She's just nodding blankly. <laughs> <laughs> Dolrum noticing that will wait until she's... <laughs> we'll ask the question again when she is a little bit more... Uh together oh, sorry yeah what was that take your time mm. i was just seeing if we if you would uh give us permission to use the sensors aboard the arian to do a sensor sweep of the system we might be able to find some residual uh residue uh warp trail anything like that from uh the ova who did this um of course it's a long shot because it's been a couple of, of cycles, but anything's possible. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Dolrum will hit his badge. Dolrum to Ela. Uh, Lakila here, sir. We were given permission. Go ahead and run a sensor scan of the system. See if you can find anything that uh, would remotely give us clues on anything we're looking for here. Alright, if someone wants to pull up Lakila's sheet, activate him. On it. <laughs> uh, activate him. Insight... <laughs> uh, nah. Insight... Uh, nope, control science. And then... Okay. No. Actually, we're going to do insight science. And the ship will assist okay. with sensors plus science. This is going to be... What difficulty did I set this world at? I think it was a... Three. Three uh, let me find out. I really should keep that handout open. The handouts are like not opening for me. <laughs> is it, this is Dolive, right? Dolive, four. yes. Is it four? Okay, then in which case this is going to be a difficulty four test. Does okay. Ela have technical expertise? No. I feel like that would be a good choice. She, she does. Now. <laughs> 
sensor operations as a focus. Indeed. I got the Arian. It's doing sensors science. Sensor science, that's right. Uh, what either of their values work here of every problem has a solution and or uh, I know my stuff and I will show it off. Um, what are your focuses? Just so I can... Uh, astronomical phenomena, chronological anomalies, physics, and sensor operations. Uh, then yes, I know my stuff will would work as a focus. Or would, right. would work as a value here. Alright, I will pop that. Okay, USS Arion has given you one success. So we just need one more. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's the one. Cool. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, you're noticing... Uh, so it takes a little while, and the USS Arion sensors are not top of the line, but they're still pretty good. Um, but even still, after a couple days, most things sort of fade into the background. However, there does seem to be a slight disturbance in, um, oh, force. Uh, sorry, what was that? I said the force. Uh, no, wrong, wrong uh, franchise. <laughs> wrong universe. I'm wrong sorry. universe. Wrong crossover. <clears throat> not necessarily the wrong universe, just not the right galaxy. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that one's far, far away. Uh, you're finding a series of, um... Uh, what sort of particles were they? Let's. Um, they would be a heavy. Ah, a heavy part. Ah, a. S Sorry, I have gone completely um. The tongue tied here. What you're detecting is a series of heavy particles, uh, typically associated with uh, early stage nebula, uh, so star nurseries and that the like. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, heavy heavy radiation or heavy radioactive ions. Uh, however, they are well past their half life or well down the half life slant, which is why most sensors have not seen or did not see them. And heck, it's likely you wouldn't have seen them either unless you were specifically looking for these faint trails. Um, it leads. Um, further coreward, so more northbound on the map. Um, okay. However, it it doesn't... Um, uh, it only seems to uh, head off in that direction until these particles no longer interact with any uh, gases being emanated from the Class J supergiant. So it seems that there was a weird chemical reaction going on that caused this small trail to light up hmm. Hmm. Um. let's see so uh commander i have picked up some faint trails um if i had to take a educated guess if they're still in the free vitar state they're headed towards or have already gone to Either uh, Bexalara or Nulia. Wait, hold on. My, the handout is not opening for me. Is, is it already open and just in the background? Because I've had that uh, once or twice. Yeah, I've had that is happen that too. Coming up as I have it open. Hmm. I don't know. Um, but Bexalara. All right. <laughs> hey, whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no I, 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 I just, uh, I got to the drive where I could actually see the map. Um, that's. Thank you for the information. We'll have to. We're continuing on that path when we're done here, so we'll keep have to keep our eyes out. Okay. Okay. Anything else you're interested in doing on the surface of the planet? Just going to comb through any of the information that they have. All right. uh, approximately 15 minutes or so pass, and uh, Demos signals that the uh, that the rations, etc., are ready for a dis arrival. Uh, that, 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 that. 
Demos, the um, you receive word from <laughs> down below from the medical department that the emergency rations and uh, medical relief packages are ready for transport. All right, I'll just have it beam run down. Okay. There is the ring of the transporter outside, and all of a sudden there's about 100 packages of um, class A grade ration bars suitable for 99% of humanoid life form. Let's and hope they're not the 1%. In brackets, not bullions. <laughs> <laughs> Made with real horda. <laughs> no, no, that's what the bullions eat. They have a mineral-rich diet. <laughs> uh, oh, the, oh, the things that just went through my head. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, good GM, terrible person. Let's move on. <laughs> uh... So Dolan will uh, bring Canvas out to the uh, rations that just beamed down. Let's get these inside so your people can have something. It's not glorious, but it'll definitely suffice for food. You see something about her that you haven't seen in the 30 minutes or so that you've been on the surface. She's smiling. It appears like a granite face cracking but it's smiling. She tries to hug you again, but realizes that might not be the best thing as you go into a, def a slightly defensive posture. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, let's see. So, going through the... Uh, sorry. Going through the uh, sensor data from the, comp from the system here, pretty much nothing new um, other than you know screaming torpedoes coming down from above this system doesn't have a very large sensor net and the class j supergiant does tend to muck up se lo localized sensors which is probably what made it so easy for them to get in undetected most of the data is all about uh, rebirth regeneration cycles uh, there seems to be an unofficial pool going on over uh, which individuals will be um, resurrected the most in the next two weeks. Um, Ouch. Like, <laughs> eh, you know, war, man. War sucks. Oh, random thought that just popped into my head. Hmm. Not necessarily Dol not necessarily Dolan's head, because he only has a science of two. Um, is there any background anomalies that like blip up and blip away that seem like there might be a pattern to, but maybe not? Hmm. I'm thinking if the class J giant super giant does muck up sensors and stuff, the blips could actually be the cloak ships. Hmm. If it's an imperfect cloak, yeah. Um, if you want to spend the two points for an advantage, I'll give that to you. Um, if you want to roll for it, that will be a difficulty four test. Let's let's just spend that two momentum and get the advantage for it because that sounds easier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with my me having a science of two, oh yeah, it, it, that's easier. <laughs> okay, uh, you create the advantage. Um, so uh, Dresden, as you are going through this, looking over the sh uh, with Dura looking over your shoulder, uh, the two of you are detecting. What appear to be, the you know lesser scale sunspots uh, like gas ejections from the uh, supergiant. Um, however, there over the course of the last week or so, uh, there has been momentarily um, or momentary pauses or interruptions in certain gas ejection cycles. So you know when it comes out like a large arc that sort of gracefully dissipates into nothing. Uh, instead, it looks like it's hitting a, an invisible wall and sort of disperses like a water balloon hitting a target. Uh, you can you can find that maybe on about three or four occasions. Um, uh, each time indicating po one, possibly two ships. Hmm. That's quite interesting. 
Dorm will hear that. What is the interesting answer? Well, we're able to kind of see weird obje um, objections from the gas giant, but it seems to be lighting something up around, not in odd spots, like something's out there. When does that pattern start? Um, McCall, what was that oh, within the last week? week? Okay. Within the last week. So they were tactically, they were here scoping it out in a position that would be hard to see them in until the right time to strike. Almost like they were lying in wait, maybe waiting for a, con I don't know, a coordinated strike. That could be. That's considering it. The um, canvas here said that it happened about uh, two lunar cycles ago. That's what about when it, that's about when it would have happened at the at the um, catapult station. So you perceive that this was coordinated throughout the sector. That tactically would make sense, and that I think that given the evidence of two data points, more evidence is always great, but two data points is all you need to establish a pattern. Agreed. Most logical. Well, Canvas, we won't take any more of your time as you need to uh, rebuild. I appreciate your cooperation. She nods. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um... You're very welcome. We're always willing to help those in need. As you make your way back to the shuttlecraft, uh, Dr. Sulkin, uh, you look back over your shoulder and notice that Canvas is sitting on a chair, slumped over, and snoring very loudly. Everyone seems to be giving her a wide berth. Things Most stressful. <laughs> Things stressful do to you. At least, at least the hugging has ceased. <laughs> yeah, let's not teleport to. He can get jealous. It's a hug. Have you ever met a ricin? A couple, but even then, getting jealous over a hug is... And realizing who they're talking to, Dora just sort of shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right uh demos you're on the bridge when you receive reports that the shuttle has l landed and within uh rough the speed of a scene change the turbolift doors commander dolrum and his staff walk back out all right well, i give the scene go back to my station oh well, demos how was it up here quiet kind of the way I like it. It seems like from the pa the data points that we have, it was a coordinated assault. They were attacked here about the same time as the uh, catapult station was. And from what Lakila was able to pick up in whatever gaseous trail that was still remaining, they're heading toward uh, Bexalara. That's our destination. Oh, that's where we're heading next. It just seems like now we have two reasons to head that way. Understood. Mud, set a course. And engage. <laughs> and engage. Uh, we are going to take a uh, quick bio break. Uh, so let's be back on the hour. Uh, so 7 o'clock my time and whatever time it is, your guys' time. 10. <laughs> All right. 10. 10. Yeah, I know. It's a bit late. Be back soon. Yeah. Shit.
and welcome back. So, one commercial break later, and you find yourselves in the orbit, or the exterior system of Bexalara, a Class L planet uh, surrounded by two moons. Uh, there are several small uh, Mercury-sized worlds between it and the Sun. Then there's this one. And then there is a, a pair of uh, Uranus-sized gas giants, more or less sharing the same orbit, which could be catastrophic in the next, you know, million years or so, but you're probably fine for now. And then several Pluto kind of dead worlds in the X, in the extreme. Uh, however, you also notice several, being a capital planet, there are several defense uh, several defense systems, and as you drop out at the ex at the mm, uh, sorry, as you drop out at the extreme range, uh, it's not long before your all of your sensors detect several ships moving to intercept. Uh, Sparham class cruisers, typically. Uh, so these are class four. Each one is roughly on par with the Arion. Dara, open the channel. On it. You receive a word. Uh, you, ah. you receive a pre-recorded message, Dara. Uh, text on. Uh, text only. It is a relay that the arc. The arc minister is is pleased that the Federation is visiting her at this time of crisis and that we are given the honor of escorting you to the planets. Okay. I will just throw that text relay back up, like, on screen. All right. Um, respond that uh, we uh, would like to meet with her and would provide any humanitarian aid that we can while we are here. I shall send back a text response to where, whichever ship or both ships, I guess, if I'm mm -hmm. receiving that from them. As you, Time of need. As you make your way through, uh, closer to the system, uh, you realize how, for a capital world, how sparse everything is usually a species would have at least a space dock or a large orbiting platform of some variety in orbit um, but the only thing that you see around the system is a series of crudely networked together defense satellites and several uh, vitar ships that look like they've seen better days yikes it looks like they've taken a beating uh, it doesn't take an engineer's or tactical scan to realize that these ships, while they are definitely old and falling apart at the seams, it's not recent damage. More like just general wear and tear without the resources to keep them in more Up pristine running. shape. Ah. As soon as you are brought around past the orbit of the furthest moon, the larger one, uh, you receive a communication from the surface. Audio, Audio or text? Visual. Ooh, wonderful. And I will throw it on screen. Mm -hmm. Arc. A, uh, another Vitaris female. This one you actually recognize. Uh, she was the former, ambas former Vitaris ambassador to uh, Deep Space 15. Dolrum just smiles. Kavas, it's good to see you. Commander Dolrum. You're even... I'm pleased that you're even... That it is you who visits our world. I remember fondly our chats about military protocols as well as diplo over our lunches. I, w I bid you welcome to Bexalara. Council, or the uh, first... Ah, the first seat of power within the 
free state of the Vitars. And you're able to look behind her. It's a, a grand office, uh, very similar in feel to that of, say, the Oval Office. So very cushiony chairs, lots of uh, decorative, if not, func if not functional, columns. Uh, statues of what you suppose to be war heroes or whatnot can be seen in the background, as well as lovely uh, pieces of art. Uh, she is finely dressed, uh, wearing robes of what you assume to be stationed. Not anything in the way of military attire, but, you know, good formal dress. I suppose you are ass assuming Cage Cager's message was accurate, and the F United Federation of Planets has also suffered an attack? Indeed, they attacked the uh, catapult station... Um... Well, judging by what information we got, um, probably about the same time that you were attacked in your space as well. That lines up. We haven't, aside from the assault on our Dolev facility, they have been thankfully fairly quiet. We've, appre we've only caught one individual, but before we could uh, interrogate him, he offed himself with cyanide capsule primitive but effective yes also very easy to attain in our society After... True. we just came from system and uh the dolov system and were able to get some scans of things ourselves and review the data that was there Judging from the sensor data of the, of the uh, station there, they had been camped there waiting. I'm not surprised. This whole thing struck me as pl well planned. That's what my advisors tell me. Anyways, I invite you to come to. Th I invite you to come to the surface. Bring whomever you wish. We shall chat, and perhaps your technology and insight and experience into these matters will allow us to move forward together. I'm willing to help and do whatever I can. Very well. I shall see you in one of I shall see you in one of your hours. After that I'll get my team sorry. I'll, I said I'll get my team and be there down there shortly. Do you require any medical supplies? Uh, she pauses and the, uh, she she glances off screen briefly. No, Bexelara is well is uh, well stocked and well supplied. I appreciate the offer, though. We'll be down shortly, Archmister, or Minister. And with that, she signs off. All right, everybody, let's. Have a meeting of the minds. Yes. Commander, I do have a question. Um, and an observation. This was a representative of the Vitras, and now is a member of the Free State? Yes. I... I'm just clarifying for my own information. So she has chosen her side in the war, but was once the delegate for the Federation? That is correct. She was the served as the ambassador, or whatever their term was, for the Vatars on the station. I see. And the message... I am noticing a pattern of the suicide attempts. These Vitras do not clone themselves, am I correct? They are you actually... That, yeah. That would seem to be correct based off the information we have. Because it seems like all of them keep taking their own lives. And for a species that is immortal, so to speak, is fascinating to me. I would agree. I don't... It seems that these who want to end their life are doing it in order to 
Like they're 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 being terrorists to end their lives instead of being reborn. Like they're doing it on purpose. It seems so illogical. And with that, Doctor, we agree. Dura, you had something? I mean... Being immortal isn't... At least in my eyes, not necessarily a... Good thing. People of the... The tar still die... I would assume, whether it be from disease or other things, but I'm not saying I sympathize with the OVA, but, but I can understand certainly understand. Yes, Commander. Uh, I would agree with you, Dura. It's I don't agree with the methods, but I understand the motive. Personally, I think it's all crazy. Oh, well, there's also that opinion as well, Dolorum, and that's just it. It's an opinion. We're all <laughs> entitled to have our own. Well, this is an easy compromise. Let them die when they want to. Have them sign an agreement or some waiver or some form. And I would also agree, but... Changes like that in a society that is built up among it will take time. I be personally believe that is a direction that they will most likely go in order to uh, clear this uh, problem up. But we're somewhat tied with the Prime Directive. We can aid when wanted, but we can't interfere. You know, we can always pr approach them as diplomats trying to negotiate peace, but yeah, we can't really interfere in their political setup. They want sure. to pull us into a conflict, but they really can't. Like, we can't join. Correct. It's a it's an internal situation. And as much as it, I hate being an outsider at the edge looking in. We can only do so much. That sure reminds me of uh, the Augmentic Wars. On my Earth, anyways. The humans that didn't want to go through the process, their numbers were small, so they fought. Then we reached an accord that they can get Venus as their own planet. Earth would become ours. Which, at the time, we were just cybernetically enhanced humans. I understand this logic of the transference. Vulcans, too, have something similar. When we near death, we transfer our Katra to the mind of another and is taken to the Hall of Ancients on Mount Zalea. But once the mind, the mind is there, it's placed in an ark and to be peace with one in the galaxy. It just seems odd to want to continue it, but agreeable. It would be fascinating to experience. Well, take me for example. I'm hundreds of years old. You don't I've... look a day over 20. You know, good Thousand. Parcel. As long as the parts stay functioning, I effectively can live as long as I want. But... All exos are allowed to merge their consciousness into the overlaying matrix. It's a way we can create rebirth. It's not you just download to a new body. It's you can create a new consciousness. It's a resurrection in a way. You may have some traits of the former individual, but it's all an amalgamation of everyone who's joined. It's a knowledge we can pull from. Intriguing. Most fascinating. I, At some point, sir, I would be fascinated to hear more about this. It seems similar to... Arcatra. Well, the whole goal of becoming this was to simply explore. 
as much as we can, as any and everything we could. These bodies were designed to take a beating, so we didn't have to rely on suits as much as the organic variants would, but we still have needs, wants, desires, sensations, cravings, subconscious tics, all that. If I may quote a Earth term, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Essentially. Oh, my mind went in the gutter. <laughs> Why I did it. Um, <gasps> Anyway. As if we expected anything else from you, Scotty. <laughs> I shouldn't be that predictable. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, so too late. Yeah, Let's... we've been gaming with you for two years, man. We know you. Anyway, <laughs> who's on the away team? I. Demos, let's take you two because two tactical brains are better than none. Okay. Alright. So that I'll let Jones didn't stay on the ship. Okay. So, so far that is Sulkin, Demos, and Dalrum. Uh, anyone else? Uh, I believe Dura. They okay. wanted... Dorm said something about taking Dura. Sure. All the Ds. All the Ds. Okay. <laughs> Team Big D. <laughs> Quadruple Ds. <laughs> it's all about the D. They will never know what smashes them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cause this one. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, but you guided it in spirit. This was a cascade. Da, 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 da. Are you saying say, <laughs> cascade of D's? You might say. Yeah, no, you are... Say, are you saying I guided the D? You were guiding the yep. D. Yep. Yes, you were. Uh, okay. Jesus. So. At least we're not David Mudd. He has four D's. <laughs> okay, moving on. Don't recall two. <laughs> Who cares about the three when you can see the four? <laughs> uh, You're welcome, Nicole. Oh, we need a we need a laugh. Don't don't yeah. tell me otherwise. Okay. Oh, it's perfect. Uh, nope, this one. Nope, this layer. Okay. We're floating in space. I don't have... actually yep. because of the team name and everything that there. I should take out the S and the Slayer. It's... Oh. There we go. There we go. Someone got it at first. <laughs> that physically hurt me. That was... Oh, well. Oh, man. It's Anyways. Demos. It will. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so, back. Okay, so I didn't, because I wasn't sure which planets you were going to go to, I didn't come up with set pieces for all of them, so we're just going to have to use the uh, melodious sounds of my flower, my flowery and adjective-filled voice, and your own imagination. So this is probably not going to work, but you know we'll try it anyways. Um, you beam down into a the center of a fairly large city, but it's not an advanced city. Uh, it appears to be, if anything, it bears more in line with. Uh, probably 20th century Earth in the 60s and 70s than anything further, at least when it comes to building construction. Everything is fairly square, um, sh only three or four stories tall, and it appears to be spra uh, sprawling metropolis. Uh, wide roads, um, bec since Class L planets typically have large plains and very little in the way of geological activity there's lots of flat space so that they can just build in all directions similar to prairies so it looks like iowa then yeah, yeah. iowa um alberta saskatchewan if you're canadian um montana stuff like that in saskatchewan you can actually see all of the buildings yep. that's how flat it is yeah you can watch your dog run away for four days um <clears throat> The, however, the technology level on the planet is definitely geared towards the more of a military focus. Uh, you can see, even from pretty much dead center of town, you can see large gun batteries in the, uh, in the distance pointing skywards. Uh, there are military personnel uh, running patrols. Uh, police presence is, well, I'd say police and military 
enforcement are more or less the same unit at this point. But they're peaceful. Uh, they're just sort of standing, observing. Citizens seem to be going about their days with not much in the way of hustle and bustle. And you're in front of a large, um, large structure that's more Grecian style than any of the other buildings around. You can obviously tell that more care went into this construction as anything else. Uh, pulling out a tricorder, you can see that you're, or that as soon as you transport in, a um, a building or an area shield beam uh, comes into effect, effectively neutral, uh, neutralizing any form of attack. But also, this means that your transporters won't work. Uh, you are greeted by Amb Arch Arch Minister uh, Cavis, as well as another familiar face. Uh, dressed up in military finery, uh, one oh, wrong token or wrong layer, one Adric Charmal, uh, former or former admiral of an attack fleet that was loyal to the emperor. He has now somehow found himself on this world, and running, given the amount of respect paid to him by all military personnel within a hundred meter radius. He seems to have a significant amount of respect and power. However, he does defer to the Ark Minister walking at least three steps behind her as she approaches you. Commander Dalrum, Lieutenant Commander Demos, welcome to our welcome to the home or welcome to the new homeworld of the Vitars. I believe you are familiar with my advisor, Adric Charmal. He stands and bangs his uh, chest on his, or bangs his uh, hand on his uh, chest in salute, I, but says nothing. I do a slight head bow. Just good to see you are both well. Mm -hmm. uh, Demos and Dura, can you please do me a insight plus security? Mm -hmm. And what was the difficulty on this world? I think it was a three. Might have been a two. Um, hang on, I still have the handout. Yep, it's difficulty two. Okay. Uh, just like both of us doing yep. it separately? Um, okay. Yeah, both separately. You're both carrying them out separately, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you have perimeter what? security or crowd control or okay. something along those uh, lines. Okay. Uh, would coordination sort of fit with crowd control? Uh, I will let you assist ah. Demos and use that as a focus, yes. Okay. That will work just fine for me. How many successes does he two. have right now? He has two. two, so he has passed. Okay. So. Cool. All right, then I will just assist him here. There we and go. There's three. Okay. Uh, so, uh, while Commander Dalrum and Lieutenant Commander Sulkin are busy uh, chatting it up and performing diplomatic niceties, uh, Dura and Demos lapse into their your bodyguard or security uh, role and immediately begin scanning the crowd. Uh, you see a uh, you see at at first glance right you know people beaming on ah, materializing in the middle of town square has definitely raised eyebrows, but there's a group of three who is paying are three civilians who is paying far more attention than they really should. Uh, as soon as your eyes pass over them, uh, they begin to attempt to fade into the crowd. I'm going to keep track of them. Okay. Uh, since you got that point, since you got three successes, I will say that you do so. Anyways, um, Arc Minister and uh, Arc Minister Cava, Cavis and Adric Charmal. Yes, are, are updating Dalrum and Sulkin on the situation. Yes, we've had our military... Fl it's hard keeping a... Or it's hard maintaining our front against the Imperials while also spending military resources w attempting to find these OVA. As you can well imagine... However, as you can well imagine, uh, we have had to take a more defensive posture 
since the destruction of our resurrection facility. But uh, we, we remain thankful that the Imperials have done so as well. Adrak butts in. Yes, we suspect that they have suffered a similar attack on their facilities. However, our spies have been unable to report to us, given the com nature of the communication lockdown we have put in place. It would not surprise me, considering they attacked us at the same time. It is reasonable and logical, as Dolrum side eyes to Sulkin, that they would have done the same thing to the Imperial. Yes. Yes, we're not entirely sure what the, who these Ova are. They have identified themselves as single lifers, which means that they're individuals who have, for whatever reason, decided to forego the or enlisting with the Etern the Eternity Research Group, or as we're taken to call it, the Immortality Project. We were f we have severed ties with them. Still, it's understandable. It's a small but growing movement. It's uh, since the uh, nature of what individuals sacrifice when they become re reborn has made its way public more and more more and more Vitars are choosing not to join up with the project as they reach maturity I could see why that is uh, appealing to them still we do have a well we have a minor military task force that is able to that is working behind this ah, working behind our lines attempting to tra track them down this invisibility technology they wield as well as their transporter technology uh, no they don't know about transporter technology my apologies uh, let's go back and redact the transporter tech they don't know that yet uh, makes them different their ability to be invisible makes them damn difficult to find the Federation ran into cloaked ships there for a very long time. Um, I know some tips and tricks to identify cloaked ships, but every cloaking device is slightly different. So what will work to identify one, even if it's cloaked, will not necessarily work on another. As they're talking uh, about this, uh, the military presence in the background is beginning to break up any lingering civilians, uh, encouraging them to move about their daily business. Uh, Dura and Demos, you see that group of three. Uh, one, one of them picks up or draws out a small uh, communication device, attaches it to, its, uh, to his ear, and the three of them begin to duck down a side alleyway, uh, getting lost in the confusion. Uh... I lost sight of them in the confusion. No, no, uh, they are taking advantage of the confusion to, you know, s s to hide to p pass away into a side alleyway. And okay. They, you will lose sight of them if, as they continue to do so. Dora, stay here. And uh, I'm gonna go follow them. Okay. Okay. All right. As Demos begins to. Stomp away. Uh, Dalrum and Sulkin, you. Everyone seems to take note of Demos's departure, and what little crowds remain part like water to Demos's as Moses, <laughs> not wanting to interfere in the direction of the. I think what were you nine foot tall? Yeah. Yeah, nine foot tall, three foot wide metal man and his uh, hoverball. Demos has no idea who Moses is. Nope. No, he does not. Alternate Earth. My people go. Mm. Okay. Uh, as he uh, stomps away, Charmal and Cavus share a look, look at Demos, the back of Demos' head, and then make eyes at Dolrum. Are we to let him head off and do his business? He's really good at what he does. For all we know, he could have found uh, infiltrator of some speed of some kind. 
and what he does isn't pretty. <laughs> Indeed. Cavus just looks at Charmal, who mutters something under his breath. Uh, you see two of the bodyguards just sort of take a couple steps towards Demos and just keep about a hundred meter, di uh, 50 meter distance, so 100 foot. Just keeping an eye on things, but not interfering. That was a good one, Nod. Yeah. Acknowledge that they're around. Mm -hmm. They nod back, respectfully. Yeah. Uh, okay, Cavus looks at Dolor. Come, come, let's share our intelligence. Perhaps between our two powers, we are able to figure out where these ova reside. Agreed. Hopefully. And... Uh, Demos, uh, you make your way down the alleyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a... Uh, uh, the house construction is fairly cheap. Uh, this city appears to have been built f fairly quickly. And, you know, as one has to be when one is attempting to assert control. Uh, so you suspect that it won't be too much of a hassle for you to make a violent entrance through a structural, um, something structural if need be. Um, at, also, at the very end... Sorry, the alleyway is empty. Um, it runs for approximately the length of a city block, but at the far end, you are able, or your eyes are able to filter through the light and see three individuals who, who look back at you, uh, sort of jostle each other around, and then they book it down one of the, f book it to part, ah, book it down the rest of the alleyway, turning left into the final or turning left into the back door of the final um, house on the alleyway. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna run towards them. All right. I'm gonna get to that door too if it's open or closed. Uh, they attempt to close it. Um, I'm assuming that you're going to s actually tell me what. Roll me a uh, fitness plus security, please. Difficulty of. Uh... Actually, let's do this as an opposed roll. Um, yeah, fitness security, opposed by them. Uh, given your nature, you already have one success. So they need to... I'm, I'm going to take that. Drop my dice. I'm going to spend some threat to give an, a third d20. Wow. Ooh. Okay, so that is uh, three successes, because that's a critical. Hmm. Oh no, sorry. Uh, That's only two successes for me because you already have one. I went the wrong way on this. Alright. Yep, so. Nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, so... I did take that extra momentum. Um, okay. Oh. So yeah, If zero... I could say one thing. Of course. As like I, I imagine they get the door closed, but you said that was like a, you know, weak construction. Yeah. I'm just putting my fist through that door and like destroying that lock and just opening it. Yep. That's basically it. Uh, that's how I was envisioning it. Uh, you go full uh, marathon man sprinting. Uh, the windows rattle as you pass. Uh, even Demo or even Midas is bobbing along and saying, Caution, speeds exceeding that of Midas's internal propulsion. Please slow down if you want your best friend not to be left behind. <laughs> I'll stop in a moment. <laughs> You do, you rip off the, or you punch through the door, rending it from its hinges, uh, and inside is a, a fairly spartan four-roomed uh, four house. Uh, you can see a very cheap kitchen, um, n uh, rolls spread out instead of a, rolls, ah, bedding rolls spread out instead of proper beds, uh, really old worn out chairs and yeah this thing has obviously not been used for a proper house in some time also i'm oh. going to just say as i open the door like oh i'm terribly sorry this door is very soft uh, uh you see uh two individual or two individuals at the sound 
All right, the sound of the um, forced entry. Uh, you see the three individuals along with a fourth uh, who appears to be hurriedly packing up some form of electronics into a large duffel bag. Uh, two individuals pull their s weapons and, well, you're the good guy, so you get to go first. I'm going to give them a chance. Like, now, now, the last person who tried to shoot me, I ruined them, their friends, and a good portion of their ship. That you did. Hence why you're now the Slayer. Uh, roll me presence plus security. And if you have intimidation or something like that, that would be a good focus to use. I just have my size. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you had a uh, two uh, moment or two momentum, you could use that for the an advantage, but uh, sadly not in this instance. Uh, so. Could I pay for that with threat? Sh I'll allow. <laughs> I, why not? I'll allow that. <laughs> He's not gonna turn that down. I'll take more threats. Sure. <clears throat> okay uh they have one success so you need uh they're defending so you need two or more uh, and uh, you know what i'll give you one more threat for a third dice oh okay uh because you're giving me the advantage from threat um yeah so you only need one success oh i imagine like the threat uh, look is like demos just changes yeah. his colors of his eyes and his mouth to red <laughs> And brightens up the glowing green of his Borg hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I'm going to use determination on that. Just because I don't like the device. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> no one will stand between me and those I am to protect. That is a perfectly good value here. Let's see if I can reroll this. Yeah, you can just reroll those two, right? Yeah, you can reroll as many as you want. So if you want to reroll that one, go for it. No, no, I like that one. Let's. Uh... Well. Let's... Okay, not not a complication. Not a complication. Shame. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, that's an eight. That second complication was an eighteen. Oh, you transferred him when he had that debuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Could you quickly modify that yeah. in his yeah. sheet? Uh, right. Where is that? forgot about that. Sure. Yeah. Anyways. Still. The two of them look at you, look at each other. Um, they both drop their, uh, uh, their military issue disruptors. Um... Roll me a daring plus security, please. Uh, difficulty of two. Uh, if you have quick reactions or um, micro expression reading or something like that. No, I got crap my god to beat them down, but that's it. Okay. Uh, probably no focuses then. Alright. Ooh. One success. Okay. Um, you realize what they're doing a second late as they clamp down on their back of their teeth, releasing a cyanide capsule. Uh, their mouths... Simultaneously, their mouths begin to froth, and they their eyes roll back. Uh, color is drained from their f skin as oh, they... I have something horrible to do. Oh? I have nanites in my hand still. Yes, you do. Going to get... Well, okay, so... I'm going to inject one of them with nanites. Oh, uh, okay. Um, control plus... No, daring plus medicine. That's a one. <laughs> Holy plus crap. Oh, man. Difficulty hmm. of two. <clears throat> You know what? You know what? I haven't said this in a while. I haven't said this in a while, guys. I haven't said it in a long time. I think it's been months since I said it. Yeah. For the beans. <laughs> Does that mean you're For giving the... me a, a lot of threat? Yep. Okay. 
because I need this to succeed. <laughs> I think that is an additional one. That's six threat for me. Yep. Oh. You, you can enjoy that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to. <laughs> oh, man. No focuses. Well, that's still four successes on a difficulty of two tests, so you get two momentum. Hey, two momentum, guys. <laughs> um, I think for him, because he's not used to having like the board come out of like, the top of his, he just grabs him by the throat, and it's like a little spike that just goes in. <laughs> Everything with Demos just looks violent, even though he's not trying to make it look like that. <laughs> It's so just this, his nature. This is the one instance in, in all of uh, these games where someone gets stabbed in the neck and gets better. Uh, there's a... Um, tendrils of green uh, energy move from your hand to a near corpse. Uh, at first, anyone looking nearby would swear that you're casting some sort of eldritch spell. But no, this is just nanites doing their work. Uh, quickly moving through his body, canceling out any cyanide particles, rebuilding uh, any cells that were left. And you now have a Vitars. And because you gave me so much threat, the other Vitars, um, I'm going to spend two of it uh, to create a complication as uh, Midas pops up alert. Explosive device, or proximity, de ah, explosive device in proximity has been armed. Alert. Uh, two of them, uh, the other two individuals in the other room shout, uh, for the O, or, for the Ova, for Cager. And I'm going to throw that new Borg, which I'm going to designate one of one. Okay. Uh, at Midas, as I know Midas ain't gonna catch him, but I just want Midas to have a shield. <laughs> um, and I'm going to, if I can, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> throw that bomb at the other two. <laughs> if they're trying to move away from it. Oh yeah, they are running, so they're making their way out the door, so you're going to throw... Okay, um, daring plus security. Uh, Wait, do I see people outside the door they're trying to go through, or are they I still like kind of? They're, they're heading out the front door, which is onto a more oh. busy street. Damn. Okay, you know what? I need to check something. Give me just a hot second here. Okay. Well, uh, Demos goes and plays hero. We cut back to everyone else. Uh, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Oh, okay. uh, so I just. Uh, I'm going to throw the thing into the corner Ooh. of the house, mm -hmm. and I'm going to toss out both shield spikes at it to, like, double layer it. Ah. And then I'm going to book it. Okay. So that's 30 health it has to go through. <laughs> Fair enough. You make your way out of the house, and you're approximately 10 meters, so 25 feet or so away from the door back down the alley, when there is a minor... <laughs> as not thanks to the shield spikes that's not you know the blast isn't all that major in the house you were in but it does a pretty good number on a nearby or on the neighboring building meanwhile I look to the two sorry. guards that were um, following me I'm like help that house now check if it's clear yeah believe me they're going they one of them or one of them looks at you as if he's been wanting to do that his entire life Meanwhile, in the uh, not adrenaline fueled area that is uh, diplomacy and investigation, uh, Dalrum, Dura, and Sulkin are busy poring over the scant data files of the uh, OVA. Most notably, all the intelligence they have on Cager. Uh, it appears that Cager is an individual who had grown up on uh, Krillia. Uh, he uh, reached, uh, he would be roughly 25 human years old, uh, 27.5 by Vitar standard. Uh, he was a, a hard worker in 
and a machinist and a and a chemist by trade quite happy to be on his own uh, and it seems that when the war called he found himself on this side and he was perfectly fine with that threw in threw in his loyalty with the uh, ah, with the Vitars Free State. <clears throat> then, but after a while, he became, or he became disillusioned. Uh, several pages, uh, several papers were found on Krillia and connecting systems, bearing his mark and the mark of single lifers, uh, saying that it wasn't the single lifers' job to be part of. An army who is so waste of a cause that is so wasteful of life. Uh, his proponent is that one life must be lived to be properly appreciated. And those pages began to circulate about seven or eight months ago. Uh, the pages stopped approximately three months back for reasons that are unclear. So Krillia could be the epicenter of this. Certainly. Eh, well, that's what we thought, too. However, we dug... Th we've been through that... Ta or we've been through this, that world and the nearby systems. You know, we've... We've interviewed all of Cager's known relatives and former friends. No one's seen him in about five months. Hmm. <clears throat> At this point, there is a muffled uh, shockwave as several sirens begin blaring. Adrax immediately on the communication asking for a sit rep. I hit my com badge. Demos, report. Taco Tuesday does not agree with me. On a serious note, found a couple of, just go and call them what they are, terrorists. They set off a bomb, but I got one of them. He's, um, not normal right now. Dolrum just head to, hand to forehead. Not normal in what way? <laughs> well, you know how Verity and me kind of get thing. along really well? Did the thing. And, um... Well, it's my first time actually doing it, so, um, I think he's alive. You alive? Yes, I am operational. Oh. <laughs> Can you read my thoughts? No. Um, okay, so I'm not a hive king. That's, that's good news. Uh, follow me. Compliance. Yes, compliance will be rewarded. <sighs> Tolum just turns around to Kavas and a uh, Charmal. Well, it seems there was a terrorist attack in town. From the sound of it, Demo caught Demos caught one of the terrorists, but preemptively reading between the lines, preemptively set off their plans. Hmm. Cavus glares at Charmal. You said that this city was secure. Charmal, for the first time that you've ever known him, he appears speechless and out of, con you know, not in control. I I I My apologies, Archminister. Um, I will... See to it personally that every that every house is checked. No, we are not going to endanger the sovereignty of our citizens over this. Otherwise, the terrorists will have won. Do what you must. Get warrants if you have to. D ensure that everyone knows that they feel safe and welcome. But if I hear of you anyone barging into any doors uninvited... Of course, he bangs his... Uh, he bangs his uh, chest plate and immediately uh, storms out, both furious and anxious at the same time. 
Hence, at this time, that Demos and let's call him One uh, ascend the stairs to the uh, new government facility. Uh, Yo. Com uh, yeah. Commander, this is One. One, say hello. Hello. I am One. Please don't tell Verity. Of course. Can no, no, I not scan you. This thing? Oh, absolutely. Go ahead and scan it. Uh, insight plus medicine, please. Cybernetics would be good. Um, Borg technology would be good. Nanotechnologies, anything like that would work. Xenobiology? No, not in this instance. Cybernetics. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's the two successes you need. Uh, so, aside from a side case of uh, computer-controlled nervous system, he appears to be more or less intact. Uh, the nanites acted in such a way that it counteracted all the damage that the cyanide did before it could do it, um, and repaired all the damage. Uh, thankfully, the cyanide hadn't made it to its brain, so his brain is fully intact, just overridden. I see. Can Demos you... looks like a big kid at the moment. He's just tapping his two index fingers together. <laughs> <laughs> In a nervous way or a proud way? <laughs> And a little bit of a nervous. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be in shit. <laughs> One. Can you tell us about your group? Yes, I can. Will you? Yes, I will. Proceed. My cell is the cell that I am that one is part of consisted of four individuals. We were tasked with the destruction we were tasked with the observing and eventual assault on cer several on certain defense ah, on defense platforms theta three, theta two, theta one in two days time. So this operation has since been compromised. My partner has been killed, or has killed himself. The two other individuals of the cell have fallen back. Their, uh, their safe house is 1948 Theridan Drive. What Adric, can you tell? Adric Charmal steps out, overhears that, and immediately makes a chat or barks orders into his communicator. <clears throat> what can you tell me of the leader of your organization? Cager is a highly charismatic individual who has suffered the loss of two of his siblings. I say that that is what he says. Both of his siblings are still alive. However, they have gone through the uh, reincarnation process several times in their fight against the Imperials. He operates the OVA. He has founded the OVA and operates it as a multi-celled terror uh, revolutionary network. He communicates <clears throat> Ah, sorry. Ah, GM needs more water. Ah, ah, he communicates from an encrypted facility 
that is not that is based on no planet. I am unaware of his precise location. How do you communicate with him? We communi uh, he communicates with us uh, through quantum link quantum paired communication devices that the Ferengi have sold us. Of course, it's the Ferengi. Is the Ferengi where you've gotten the cloaking technology? While one has no direct, or while one has not observed the purchase directly, that is a one has suppo ah has reached this supposition. Agreed. Commander. <sighs> well, guess we have to have a talking to about that with them. <laughs> but unfortunately, we can't undo what has already been done, so now we have to figure out how to fix it. One, was there ever any mention of what type of cloaking device we, uh, the Frangi sold to the OVA? One is unaware of the specific of the specifications of the cloak of this cloaking technology. Only that it is not top of the line, but was a good bargain. Mm. Dorm starts thinking so, not modern Romulan or Klingon, but probably ripped out of either old birds of prey, or. Old, old, old Romulan bird of prey too the scans that we received at the station were similar to Romulan technology but if it's not top of the line so it's older then we might be able to use some old tricks that um, are recorded to see if we can find the holes in, the, in their cloak systems Though, Romulan cloaks are hard to crack. Uh, Charmal uh, looks over your shoulder. If you could share any of those tricks with us, I can pass it to the fleet immediately. We can begin searching. Um, let me go. Mm. I'll need to return to the ship and see what we have on file. Because, to be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure. Because everything has changed so much over the years. Um, I might have to run it over the scans that we got from uh, the uh, Dolvi, Dol, Dol, Doliv system and see if the tricks show the, uh, the ship there to know which one I, have to, I will transmit going to take me a little bit of time. Understood. We stand by. Or the military might of the Vitars Free State stand by to assist. We have people missing too, so we want them back. Hey, Doc. Yes, Commander. You think you're gonna do what I did to him so he's, you know, normal again? I will attempt my best. Uh, is there any further information we wish? Oh, actually, yes. Um, <laughs> was this a planned assault against the Federation and the both worlds? One is unaware of the operations of other Uva of other cells. Ova cells. One you does... know nothing about the kidnappings or anything else. One one cell was to target gun platforms Theta three, Theta two, Theta one, in two days' time. We are unaware. One. What was your name originally? 
one's previous name was Tavis. All right, we're, we're going to change your name to Tavis, so... Understood. Ident identification protocol changed. <laughs> he just looks back at her, please don't tell Verity. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, uh... Commander Dalrum, uh, as you do, or as this is all wrapping up, you receive a communication from uh, whoever has Khan up there on the sh ship, which I believe is yeah, Lakila or... or maybe Dresden. Probably Lakila, since he is actual crew and Dresden is a um, temporary Dresden's assignment. A... Oh, well, true. Hmm. Captain, you are receiving a. We are receiving an encrypted hail from Deep Space Fifteen Priority, ch or Priority Channel. Can you patch it through? No, sir. Uh, request is that it be. That it be a. Uh, that it is your or that is is uh, Starfleet eyes only. Understood. And I'll turn and look to Cavus. I will run those uh, simulations and transmit anything I can. Thank you, Commander. If uh, you would follow me, <laughs> I shall see what I can do. As Tavis does. And on that note, we are going to cut cruise and cut location into the orbit of Vax. Ah, the USS Concordia drops out of uh, drops out of warp at the orb in at the system space of Vax, the home planet of the Vitars and the seat of power for the Vitars Imperium. Immediately you receive or Captain Bashir, you receive a similar welcome, uh, except this time it is by uh, several large carriers make their way towards you, and you are hailed. On screen. Uh, was it this chap? Yes. I am Adrak Jalak. Or ja F, sorry. I am Adrak Jalik of the Imperial of the Vitars Imperial Military Forces. Uh, please identify yourself. I am Captain Bashir of the USS Concordia, United Starfleet Federation. We request an audience with the Emperor. He pauses. And Ah, your former designate, your, you formerly served on the USS Nighthawk, correct? Correct. Ah, yes. Uh, the Imperator has the crew of the USS Nighthawk listed as allies. Uh, trusted allies, actually, which is surprising, given that his neutral status towards the USS, or the United Federation as a whole. Anyways, please come with me. I shall alert the Imperator of your... Uh, the Imperator staff of, to your arrival. Thank you. We will follow. And with that, he winks away. And fairly similar, uh, two large, nope, right token layer, two large carriers fallen beside you. These, on the other hand, are scale six that dwarf you. And you can... Um, uh, was it Lagos? Yes. Uh, Lagos informs you that they have weapons lock on, but currently powered down. Hey, we will follow him in. Mm -hmm. It's not long, actually. Surprisingly short period of time, I should say, that um, Lagos reports that they're being hailed from the surface. On screen. Imperator, um, 
a face which you recognize as Imperator Japler the Final, uh, resplendent in his uh, crown, large flowing golden robes, and a suit that looks like it might be worth more than the entire net worth of small planets, uh, greets you. Uh, his teeth shine as he says, Captain Bashir, it is so... Well, I bid you welcome to, once again, to the planet of Vax and my imperial state. I will bow and... Uh, Imperator, you seem well. Are you feeling better? If you are referring to the mental surgery that was performed on me while on Deep Space 15. Yes, that has unclouded my mind a significant amount. I wish I'm glad that, to hear that. I wish that it was done sooner uh, so that this war could have been averted. Alas, they refuse to accept that I am a changed leader and will and still refuse to recognize my uh, right to rule them. Still, I suspect you are here because of the attack on our <clears throat> on our uh, most prized Eternity Research Group. I am. We too were attacked. Um, was the facility damaged? <clears throat> The cloning facility was damaged, was heavily damaged, and may, and a lot of the, ah, and a lot of genetic material has been lost. Yes, sadly, the the greatest attack came to our computer systems. Now all stored backup copies are corrupted. Our nation, our imperial state, is no longer to resurrect, able to resurrect itself. At least not until fresh copies can be made, which is a very time-consuming process. They hit you hard. Uh, yes. Yes, Director Fomo has been severely reprimanded for his lax... or for his lax uh, security protocols. Is there anything we can do to assist? Unless you happen to have the location of these terrorists and are willing to provide it to me so that we can wipe them off the face of the galaxy. And his eyes burn with a seething hatred. It's actually probably the scariest you've seen him. Alas, I don't I... believe there's much assistance you can be of. I was hoping you would have the same information for me. Mm. They've taken a significant amount of uh, Federation citizens, and oh. we're looking to get them back. Uh, it pains me that Star that the Federation has been brought into this conflict. I, unlike the terrorists, have respected your neutrality. At least once you made it clear that you you were unable to embroil yourselves in one side or the other. Um. Let's see. Can you uh, please make a diplomacy check, please? Uh, so, let's say um, presence plus command, difficulty of three. Oh yeah, I forgot to roll a couple things. Plus. <clears throat> Where are we at on? Uh, oh, we got two. Yeah, you have two one. momentum. I'll take one. I want to get this. Go for it. Come on. <laughs> that's a good thing you took it. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, problem is, that's still a difficulty three test. Okay. 
Uh, unless you want to spend your determination. Captain, I'm a... Cap, uh, you realize that he isn't being completely open, um, but he is. he stands staunch that he, they don't have the information you seek. What is, um, I'm sorry, I don't have my book with me. Mm -hmm. What is bold? Uh, if you spend, if you got a point, ah, if you got your third dice by spending threat, you can reroll 1d6 or 1d20. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um. I'm going to do, uh, command is a slippery slope. Okay, and this is definitely very slippery. Yep. Okay, uh, so you can re-roll those two zeros. <clears throat> There's the third success you need. Okay. The uh, what he does, uh, Commander. He pauses. Uh, you can see that he's about to state his uh, once again complete denial of all known uh, facts. Captain Bashir. Um, I would like to... I believe that we can help each other. I might, have, I might have some information. It won't lead you directly to them, but it might be a... It would be a step in the right direction. One that you might be able to exploit far easier and far better than me. We've... My... Following my orders, we have been funneling weapons into the hands of certain individuals of a of a loyalist nature who are behind the uh, behind the enemy lines in order to sow a bit of confusion. It's actually been of some success. I'm quite pleased with myself for thinking of it. However. If I were to say, give you the, and however, those weapons stopped, the second our military scientists determined that some of them were used against our own cloning facilities. So, I will give you the inform. I will give you the contact information of our main, our point of us uh, sale. And perhaps they'll be a little better. Perhaps they can point you in the right direction. And we'll keep you safe and not tell anyone about this. You say that on the bridge of a starship where starship or yeah. on command yeah mm -hmm. where rumors are where rumors travel faster than any form of legitimate communication yeah mm. right very well and with uh commander hadrix your console activates with a uh series of coordinates pointing you uh to the um, uh, to a uh, facility on Tolox, which is the home base of the Imperial Defense Fleet, as well as a name. His name is Jaren. Hmm, this is fascinating. We need to take a look into this. Well, we, I, I like look over Hadrick's, of course, he, I'm hoping he tells me this about the defense fleet. Will we have any problems going to the head of your defense fleet? He's not 
Oh, I'm not sending you to the head of the defense fleet, Captain. Oh. I'm sending you to one of the bartenders. <laughs> I just look over at the captain. And I'm out the words, bartender? I look down. It's a lead. Imperator, if there's anything we can do to assist with your rebuilding, please contact me. I will... One more question. Uh, when exact precisely was this attack on your data and the cloning facility? Uh, he looks off screen to an individual. That's approximately three and a half about four days ago. And Same this... time as ours. Yeah. Yep, precisely. Precisely. Okay. Imperator, I thank you. And nod and bow again. Again, mm -hmm. I wish you the best of luck. And give my mm -hmm. condolences and <laughs> to the facility manager. He nods his head ever so slightly. It might be an honor. <laughs> Captain Bashir, once again, it is nice to see Starfleet's presence in our system. I hope that this will become a recurring site. I hope once again this situation is ended. We will be able to return and continue our conversation. May the flow of life... Uh, or may the... May the flow of life forever find you renewed. Live long and prosper. <laughs> I look down to Hedricks. Is that right? <laughs> and he just gives you a double thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Off screen. <laughs> and with that, he vanishes. All right, what do we got? A bartender? Great. Captain, we've had worse leads before. We have. Honestly, the bartender is usually the one that knows everything. Good point. I, uh... Our doctor... Um... When we were here before, it started as a duck-blind mission. And we actually took the form of the tross. We're not going to ask what happened to my antenna, but I think we might, if Dr. Feliza is willing to go down undercover and meet with this bartender. It's, uh, Lieutenant Lagos pipes up. Uh, sir, we're receiving a hail. Uh, priority encrypted traffic from Deep Space 15. Okay. On screen. On screen. What happens now is a three-way conversation Ooh. between... And I, if I was smart, I would have done this sooner, but I'm not a good GM. So, you know. I'm either a good GM or a bad GM, nowhere in between. It will be between Admiral William T. Riker. It, and it will he will loop in Captain Bashir of the USS Concordia. Uh, that would be where is Dolrum? And and of the Cerberus or not the Cerberus. Of uh, the laden is Keevan. <clears throat> Captains. Now you can see that uh, William or Admiral Riker has a haggard expression on his face. His normally well kept beard doesn't look like it's been maintained for the last two days. Uh, his hair, normally combed back, is a little haggard. And judging from the p deep pockets under his eyes, He's not had a lot of sleep. Captain. Admiral. Admiral. 
Report. Technically, I'm a commander, but... Uh, well, it seems like our Ferengi friend friends have been selling technology to people that they shouldn't. The OVA have been using um, cloaking technology. Um, judging by the put together of what we've um, put together of some details, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, we put together what we put together. Uh, <laughs> most likely, older Romulan cloaking devices. Um, transporters are also were used on our um, station to beam up our personnel, so it's likely that the transporters were. T- technology was also sold to the OVA. Um, on the Free State side, they've attacked the cloning facility. Um, we rendered humanitarian aid to the people there um, and got their um, the sensor records from them and found out that they were staking out that operation for upwards of a week before the actual attack, which seems to have been coordinated with the attack on our station. Um, Proceeded to the capital, met with um, our old ambassador friend of the Vatars, um, and managed to have a terrorist attack in the city. We're all fine. We were able to capture one of the terrorists and investigate. Um, it seems like um, Kager. 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 Um, operates everything from a centralized location that is not a planet um, but each cell is kept in the dark of what other cells are doing so this is what it was like fighting the Bajor or for the Cardassians to fight the Bajorans Bashir, report Admiral uh, I've met with the Imperator and they too were attacked. It seemed coordinated at the same time as we were attacked. Uh, their systems, the cloning facility was attacked and damaged, but mainly their systems and most of their files were deleted. So they can't make more copies um, or it's going to take a long time and they basically have to start over. I have another lead of weapon shipments that might we need to follow up on. Good. You have new orders. Pull back. Admiral? Admiral, I'm, I did we read that correctly? Yes, I said pull back. I have received orders from my superior. Apparently, Starfleet Intelligence deems the Vitars area of space too fragile for Federation starships to go gallivanting about. They're se- I'm being ordered to pull all Starfleet resources out while they send in a specialist operation to perform the uh, extraction. I will need... F- I will uh, Please prepare full, uh, uh, f- a full report so that I can pass them on to their specialists when they arrive. I'm not happy about this either. Trust me. (sighs) Not happy about it, but we'll follow orders. Understood, Admiral. We'll pull back to meet up with the Leyden and the uh, Concordia to all return back to uh, 15. Right. Yes, Admiral. We will return as soon as we can. And then yes, Dolan sir, we will, will comply. Dolan will uh, kind of speak up. Or we could return to the catapult. Concordia has a shipyard basically <laughs> built into it. We can try to repair the station, get the catapult back up and running. He nods. Make it so. It puts us closer. All right. Sorry, then old habit. It, it puts us closer if we need to be available. Very well. Concordia is ordered to report back to Starbase Deep Space 15, along with the laden Arion. Oversee, or once transfer of personnel is complete, you are to oversee repair of the catapult, so that is functional as needed. 
won't we need the Concordia's shipyard in it? Uh, yes, but given <laughs> Captain Bashir's previous ties to Starfleet Intelligence, I want him nearby for a read on the situation. He will he will move to assist as soon as his lysing is complete. Understood. We'll meet up at the catapult to switch over personnel and the Arion will start the repair process while the Laden and Concordia head back. Very well. See you in a bit. Admiral yep. Admiral, um we will be there as soon as possible. The warp drive that we've installed seems to be having a minor malfunction. It might take a extra day, but we will be there as soon uh, as possible. As far as I was aware, Captain, it's working perfectly fine. I kicked your leg. <laughs> no, I throw a pad at him from across the room. <laughs> Uh, roll me a daring plus command test. Um, if you have a, you know, deceit or <laughs> um, gambling. Oh, oh, and, oh, oh. No, don't fall into that trap now with gambling. This is going to be opposed by Admiral William T. Rikers, a.k.a. the best poker player in Starfleet's <laughs> test. Um, okay. I'm oh, sorry. Data can still mad. beat him any other day. Probably. Can I, we, I try to. We still make have. It worse? We have. We sorry. still have one momentum. I will take that. Uh, and sorry, what were you saying, Scotty? I'm like, do I? Could more um, see what's happening? Be creative and somehow reverse engineer it, like uh, an alarm to go off. Uh, we'll see what happens with the captain. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that is a grand total of five on the Admiral's Dang. side. Now that is... Uh, Admiral Riker sort of puts his head in his hands, m massaging his samples. Captain Bashir, you are aware that I am... That for seven years I served under one of the greatest men in Starfleet who pulled that trick on no fewer than 15 occasions that readily come to mind. Your, your request, or your, have your chief engineer double check that, en that warp engine on flight and get back now. Yes, Admiral. Ooh, you in trouble. As he begins to sign off, he does give a warm smile. And goes, nice try, though. On any other admiral, that might have worked. <laughs> I wish I didn't blow my determination earlier. I would have. I well, and I, I, should have, oh! I should have blown Spirit of Discovery and added three points to the pool. <laughs> oh, dude, that would have been awesome. I, I should have. Cause I almost said it before you rolled. <laughs> Well, I was also thinking of trying to, because I have reverse engineering, and I have a three in engineering as uh, more, so... I don't I think that's how reverse engineering works. <laughs> if I'm trying to break something... This... <laughs> reverse breaking engin... something is not reverse engineering. <laughs> it. Taking it from a working state to a not working state is not reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is seeing a toaster oven and being able to build a toaster oven toaster. out of a car out of a car engine i've done that before it's it's really not hard actually you just turn the engine on for a little while but anyways. <laughs> but i have many perspectives more knowledge yeah <laughs> uh anyways i know time is getting on so i oh. sorry for forcing it but i wanted to cut back so time passes uh, another two days back at warp uh the uss arion drops behind and leaves itself at the Hmm. Uh, you at the catapult where it begins to ascertain the uh, what is needed to get the station operational again. USS Concordia and the USS Layden. You make your way back, and as you enter the uh, Carceri Nebula, make your way to the station. You see that there is another ship waiting. Uh, USS Bashir recognizes it 
USS Bashir. Yes! Best <laughs> ship ever! Uh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, sensors identify it as the USS Black Shield. Uh, Argos pipes up, or Legos pipes up. Captain, we're being hailed. On screen. And you're staring at a individual who might have been your best friend. <laughs> as Commander Helsing. Well, our worst in... enemy, either way. <laughs> yeah, no. Rival, you know, <laughs> teammate, however it was. Uh, Commander right, Helsing, right. sitting in the lone captain's chair, surrounded by several officers all of whom appear very grim, but doing their best to focus on their tasks. And I believe Sunbait has dropped into chat. This is uh, Commander Helsing, Captain of the Black Shield. Captain. Nice. Uh, still just a commander, but just captaining the Black Shield right now. How are you doing? Yes, sir. How's your sister? Doing well. Doing Good. well. Still got an eye out for uh, a certain other individual. What are you doing here? Um, new assignment. Go on. Um, probably best if we talk in private, talk face to face. Well, I would be honored to give you a tour of my ship. Come on over. <laughs> and, on that, yeah. and on that note, we are going to end this first part. And part two will be next week with special guest Sunbay play, reprising his role from Commander Helsing from the Nighthawk. Uh, so thanks for dropping in for this, you know, five or ten minutes, five minute introduction there, <laughs> Sunbay. But we will see more of you next week. I look forward to it. Yeah. So uh, thanks all Great. for watching. Thanks all for watching. Thanks all for playing. And we'll be back next week for our last episode before Christmas. Bye bye.